the scriptures talk you to about a blessed man as well that as like us, the man hits that who's delighted bell is in the law of God. From us. So as someone says that whatever it says God is the light is going to set in the you on law of God. every time. It's and going to make you attain whatever stage in the Christ wants you to attain. That, that man you. is like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves do not wither when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If a man, any man, desires to strive for mastery, the idea here is an Olympian, one who wants to engage in athletics, that if that man wants to run so to win, he says that man will never be crowned as the winner except he strives by the rules. Other versions will give you that expression that when a man wants to run in an Olympic or an athlete, that there are rules, there are principles. So there is a relationship between compliance to these principles and gaining mastery in the kingdom. Mastery in the kingdom is based on light. And it's very, very important that we understand this. John chapter 1 and verse 14. Let me share with you the last thought that I shared with them in Bauchi. I think this will be a great blessing to us. And then we begin to establish along the lines of today's teaching. Genesis 1 and verse 5. Not John 1, 14. We're coming there. Genesis 1 and verse 5. Please look up, everyone. The Bible says... In fact, read with me. One to go. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. Just stop there. The Bible says God called the light day. So in God's mind, what makes a day is not the passage of time. What makes a day is the appearance of light. That every time a man has light, he has entered his day. It is not the passage of time that determines whether your day will dawn. It is the excellency of the light that comes. God called the light day, but he called darkness night. So no matter what time of the day, if you are a possessor of darkness, you are in your night time. God called the light day. He called the darkness night. So if I want to turn my darkness or my night time today, I don't have to wait for time to determine it. There is a level of spiritual illumination that can turn my night to day. At the instance of light, darkness can turn to day. You are in this beautiful auditorium right now. If you had been here since morning or you don't have any access to a timepiece to know what time it is, if I told you it is night now, you may hardly believe. Is that true? Because the light here gives the illumination that, that is equivalent to that of day. Can I tell you this? Waiting for time to turn your night to day is a total waste of time. In God's mind, day is equivalent to light. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. So as you pay attention to the things that I'll be sharing with you, I pray that the light that comes from this teaching will sustain the power to turn every night today in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The first thing I want to talk about when you want to gain mastery, you have to understand the first concept we are going to deal with here in part one, wherever we stop, we'll take um, from there next week is the spirituality of life. Please write it down. This is a concept and a truth that most believers do not have that understanding of. That life is spiritual.
spiritual in every way in fact when it has to do with the spirituality of life every religion i was studying to update my myself as to how many religions we have in the world and um as at the last time i checked it was now about four thousand two hundred religions so some 200 people have added the you know the experience to the least 4200 religions and counting i can assure you that maybe except for a few most of these religions believe that the foundation of an individual's consciousness awareness or excellence is from the realm of the spirit based on his ability to make contact with the realm of the spirit the three principal religions that came out from abraham Christianity, Islam, Judaism. All three agree. All three agree that everything that a man has is derived from the extent, the health, and the quality of his spirituality. Life and living is spiritual. Please write it down. Life and living is spiritual as simple as this concept is you can spend your life in total defeat and failure not knowing that life is spiritual we live in a world that celebrates intellect and that is wonderful we live in a world that celebrates science and that is wonderful but i must tell you that everyone who has done anything worthwhile on earth beyond beyond a normal human frequency would agree that they outsource their intelligence or whatever advantage they had from the realm of the spirit whether it's a scientist whether it's a religious leader the faith life is no exception life is spiritual romans chapter 1 and verse 20 life is spiritual the bible says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse he said the invisible things from creation are now seen they are manifest by the things that are visible so the bible tells us that there are two realms and two dimensions of reality there is what we call the invisible realm take note invisible with respect to your seeing invisible does not mean unreal invisible and visible that means for every material thing that appears listen carefully there is an invisible dimension and an invisible component to it it was apostle james who was teaching us on faith and works chapter 2 and verse 26 of james and he borrowed a phenomenon to help us understand faith and works and here's what he said for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead so any body body there means any material vessel that does not have a spirit component back in it it does not have life are we together body there does not just mean a human body no your business is a body your ministry is a body everything is a body if you cannot show the spirit that empowers it then it is dead that means the formula for destroying any body is to create a system of separating it from the spirit that backs it is that true when you want to save a man from tragedy you call it deliverance how do you save that man because the conditions that the physical conditions are bodies and there is a spirit that is giving that condition life so until you create a system of separating that body from the spirit that body or that condition will still be alive i hope you know that bodies here don't just mean material human bodies troubles are bodies there is a spirit that gives them life and for as long as that spirit has not been separated from that condition it will continue to to act as though it is a living thing very powerful life is spiritual second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says while we look not at the things which are seen 
but the things which are unseen i would always bring your attention to this unseen does not mean unreal unseen does not mean unreal please look at me if i ask you to describe for me everything you can see on this stage you most likely will this will be talking about the monitors maybe the fans the flowers and so on and so forth but the bible tells us that in mount zion there are many other things you are not seeing the bible says there is within the midst of god's people an innumerable company of angels question where are they just because your physical sight cannot capture them does not mean they are not there because in the course of every service you will see operations whose origin is not physical you for instance when someone starts shouting under the anointing who touched the person you have a neighbor and you can't see anything between two of you so what is responsible for that extra phenomenon it tells you that there is more than you can see life is spiritual hebrews 11 and verse 3 hebrews 11 and verse 3 through faith the bible says we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear do you know what that means the mother that gave birth to anything physical is invisible now there are mothers here with children and we are able to relate with that experience because both the mother and the child are physical is that true but now imagine that a mother is invisible and you just keep seeing children you know that they come from somewhere the bible is saying that everything you see in your physical realm is only a child that the mother that gave birth to that child and continues to give birth to that child you call your physical realities is the realm of the spirit write this down please the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm very simple it will never never change the realm of the spirit governs the physical whether you are interested in being spiritual or not this is an, an information that your life depends on the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm you must understand the frailty of the physical realm with respect to the realm of the spirit that means with respect to the realm of the spirit this physical realm is very frail it is subject to change anything you see that is physical under a certain condition the realm of the spirit can superimpose upon it and change it it is both good and bad news the good news is that whatever is physical that is inconsistent with what god has said about you there is a provision by tapping into the supply of the spirit to change it the bad news is that when you are careless about any physical good thing an expression can come from the realm of the spirit and also change it to the negative an example while men slept the bible says the enemy came as a farmer and planted something you went to bed and woke up with something you can't remember going to bed with because the realm of the spirit controls the physical you must master therefore the keys that translate physical realities spiritual realities into physical realities you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations can i tell you your your mastery when we say you are a master spiritually we define your mastery based on number one your knowledge of god but number two your depth of comprehension of the principles that are able to translate spiritual realities into their physical manifestation and that is the measure of true spiritual power i've taught you here that there is a biblical litmus test you know we like to say we are powerful every believer will say you are powerful potentially yes but experientially there are many believers who are not powerful the bible gives us an unmistakable um 
litmus test to know whether you are powerful or not let me show you for the sake of this teaching genesis chapter 1 let's look at verse 2 to 4 genesis chapter 1 2 to 4 gives us the ultimate test of true mastery and spiritual power are you ready the bible says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep then the bible says the spirit of god moved or hovered upon the face of the waters verse 3 and elohim said light be and there was watch this now true spiritual power is your ability to say and then it happens and god said and there was it doesn't matter what he said so like god when you rise to mastery to a point where you can say and it happens and god said and there was verse 4 and god saw what he said so you must see what you say and what you say when it appears it must be good these are the conditions the ability to say and it appears it becomes visible to your eyes and it is good that is spiritual power the ability to say and then it becomes then you will behold it because the bible says the word became flesh and then it dwelt among us that which was invisible now gained a material expression and we beheld even the glory of God as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So if you are able to say, and then it happens, and then we see it, and it is good, you are truly powerful. The centurion had this understanding, and he came to Jesus. And when Jesus said, okay, let me respect you by reason of your office and come to your house, he said, no, there is something I know. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goeth. I say to one, come, and he cometh. Jesus speak the word only. And Jesus said, I've not found this faith. I've not found this construction. Who taught you this? who taught you that the true proof of power is the ability to say and it happens that god is bringing us to points where our words are no longer empty babblings and ramblings of men that your words carry power and what drives this kind of result is understanding the spirituality of life please say after me life is spiritual that means for everything that happens in your physical world, trying to deal with it spiritually is proof of amateurism immediately. Are you seeing that many believers never really get to grow and to be strong? Why? Because we usually will address the issues of our life primarily from a physical standpoint. The Bible is full of many, many instances where scripture tells us that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood is that true when jesus begins to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit when god wants to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit it is only men that deal with things physically and that's why there's hardly any victory so the financial situation the spiritual situation the health situation whatever condition it is the origin is from the realm of the spirit we have the privilege of learning this from the book of job i'm not going there because of time but the book of job theologically speaking is believed to be one of the earliest books in the bible because of the context and i'm not here to do any theological argument about it but the bible tells us that there was this man called job the bible records that he feared god and eschewed evil and then he said at a certain time that the sons of God came to give accountability before the Lord and Satan was in their midst and there was a discussion between Satan and God have you considered my servant Job and Satan began to speak and said does he fear you for nothing give me the permission to touch everything around his life and he will curse you to your face and he said all right so you go and then the Bible makes a very interesting statement he said there was a certain day that means there was a date allocated for that which was finished in the realm of the spirit to find expression 
there was a certain day it is your assignment as a believer to keep shifting that certain day so that it never manifests in your life that the conclusions in the realm of the spirit that means everything concluded in the realm of the spirit depends on your cooperation to give it a certain day when all that discussion finished in the realm of the spirit while it was happening i'm sure job got up and was enjoying with his children not knowing that time had been allocated for something in the realm of the spirit to find expression your not gaining mastery will allow many certain days you are not part of why should a discussion happen in the realm of the spirit and its manifestation happen in this realm i become the principal victim and yet i did not contribute to choosing the day you read the book of Esther, you will learn that it was through divination they chose the day that Haman was to strike. They didn't just select any day. It was a discussion in the realm of the spirit by divination to find what day is most appropriate for this transportation to come unhindered. And they chose the date. Life is spiritual. Only God knows what God has planned. No wonder the Bible says this is the day that the lord has made listen 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 there is a day that just happens but there is the day that the lord has made there is a day too that satan has made all of them you can make your day god can make the day prophetically satan can make the day it is up to you to stand and through intelligence make up your mind that that which satan has programmed for me will not find material expression it is up to you this is the day that the Lord has made. Can I tell you, many believers have not experienced the day that the Lord has made. They have experienced days that they have made. They have experienced what the Bible calls the day of adversary or adversity. The day you experience one full day that the Lord made, you will know his signature will be on that day that this is the day I made. And can I tell you, mastery can bring you to a point where every day becomes a reflection of the day that the Lord has made. I will tell you the things that are captured in a day that the Lord has made. He taught us a few of them in what we call the Lord's Prayer. He said, when you are praying, remember that a day that I make, I will always give your supply per day. Give us this day our daily bread that means any day you don't see bread in it someone else made that day that if god makes a day bread there does not mean food bread means everything that needs to make you efficient relationships anointings there is a day that the lord has made but just because he made it does not mean you will walk in it striving for mastery this is the day that the Lord has made for the Bible to tell you this one is God that made it it means there are many other expressions of that day there is the one Satan can make ask Job Job did not experience Satan's days every day the day he experienced Satan's own we knew that this one it wasn't God that made this day because in one day losses and pain and wickedness and tragedy my question is the day you keep entering who made it that your life becomes a plethora of defeat and pain and nothing in it that makes for kingdom come nothing in it that gives god glory the bible tells us this is the day that means see it this is the product that samsung made this is the product that Apple made. You can see their signature on it. There are fake shoes and there are real shoes. There are fake everything and the real one. And when you bring it before the person who made the day, he can point to you. You may not even know which is fake or real, but they can tell you. Because there is every signature of authenticity over the product of the original maker. There should be something on your life on your day on your destiny we will know that this is the destiny that the lord has made this is the home that the lord has made this is the ministry that the lord has made this is the business that the lord has made show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway 
we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest I want to give you in this part one two keys there will be extensive keys remember we are striving for mastery so the Lord is taking away everything that makes for spiritual amateurism from your life listen be determined in this series that I will lay hold of this thing once and for all I'm tired of being in a situation and not know what spiritual law to engage I just keep applying anyone that's especially what we do blood of jesus fire of the holy ghost we carry a seed we don't even know that all of these principles have their exact there is the exact role that they play hallelujah i made up my mind that I will submit myself to learning and gain understanding and gain mastery from scripture over every aspect of the kingdom life that God will grant me the grace to pursue I still remain to, uh, remain a student pushing to, towards that mark that price of the high calling but I can tell you so far I thank God for that decision you can gain mastery listen to me ladies and gentlemen you can strive and go into perfection hebrews chapter 6 the bible says therefore leaving this this elementary principles of this and that he lists six of them foundations of the christian faith hebrews 6 and verse 1 it says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on to what perfection not laying again the foundation and it lists six of them there are six of them that make the foundation but it says listen you can exhaust them and then go on to perfection the word perfection there is maturity stature let us go on to perfection that means i need to come to a point where my prayer works that every time i open my mouth to pray i'm not hoping it will work i can know that it works are we together imagine if the meal you plan to eat after service now the person cooking it is not sure if the food will be ready or it will be done how would you love to fellowship with that kind of person that with the hunger from service after praying and shouting you rush home and you find the person still wondering is it onion or put first what have you been doing for five hours i'm 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 really i'm not sure i just didn't want to make a careless mistake the person should not be there there are occasions that will only allow room for masters there are realms where you are not allowed to be on practice while you are there you must have done your homework the throne is not for learning no there is the cave of adulam that gives you an opportunity to do your trial and error but then when you are to get to the throne because one mistake on the throne will also be taken as law and people will pay the price for it god wants to bring us to greater levels of perfection and mastery let me give you three keys the first key that controls the pursuit for attaining unto mastery haven't understood the foundation that life is spiritual you want to translate realities from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest in this realm the first key is understanding prayer please write it down don't assume you know what I'm saying understanding prayer I can tell you many people pray but very few people understand prayer there are many believers who cannot tell you the role that prayer has to play as far as their actualizing destiny is concerned people just pray because you were born into a faith experience that prioritizes prayer so when we say open your mouth and pray everybody is talking we're saying all kinds of things and the results show that we are not gaining anything listen let me tell you this generally speaking 
this this i think um i think we'll, we'll have to look at it there's a scripture in my mind help me holy spirit haggai haggai chapter one i hope i'm right haggai chapter one please give us verse five every time something goes wrong in your spiritual life the bible mandates that's right that you consider your ways it means there is something wrong with your approach we're reading five six seven but let me take it slowly now therefore please go back to verse five it says thus saith the lord of hosts the reason why things don't seem to be working for you consider your approach there is something you have not understood verse six it says you have sown much look at the various conditions that necessitate you considering your ways you have sown much a lot of effort but little results it says you eat and you do not have enough insufficiency you drink but you are not filled with it ye clothe you but there is nothing warm and he that earned wages earned to put it in a bag that is full of holes look at he's describing negative conditions and he's saying consider your ways there is something wrong with your approach the outcomes are a report card that you need to strive for mastery are we together you have sown there's some little results but there's nothing much you eat but you are not satisfied there's insufficiency and then verse 7 he mandates you for the second time consider your ways everybody say the ways of god this is very very important so one of the keys is prayer james 5 and verse 16 let's discuss on prayer a bit if most believers understand the power of prayer i want to quote something here while i was studying for this series i came across a very simple quote by e.m bounds for many of you you have studied e.m bounds e.m bounds was an authority in the school of prayer and he wrote something that is very powerful i want to quote it please listen carefully he said of what infinite importance is the place of the intercessor is the place the intercessor holds in the kingdom of god is it not indeed a matter of wonder that god should give men such power it's a question he said yet there are so few who know what it is and how to take hold of its strength and pray down the blessing of god upon the world em bounds what he's trying to say is that the intercessor he's speaking with respect to intercession and he's saying that most believers do not know the kind of power god has given them in prayer and that only few have understood that if believers knew the power that was given to them in prayer how that they can rain down blessings from heaven they can convert spiritual riches and realities and give them material expressions if they truly understand prayer in mark chapter 11 and verse 24 mark chapter 11 and verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray believe that ye receiveth them and ye shall have them please look up there is nobody who ever gains mastery in the kingdom mastery in converting spiritual realities into their material expression without understanding the ministry of prayer efficient prayer is taught you don't just pray you are taught to pray in luke chapter 11 i think it's luke chapter 11 from verse 1 let's look at it i hope i'm right the bible says and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place the he being jesus when he ceased one of the disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray as john taught his disciples everybody who prayed properly was taught to pray this was not an issue of prayerlessness like you've heard me say it was an issue of praying amiss 
they found out that they were dissipating a lot of energy in prayer but the corresponding result was not matching that energy and they said there's something we are doing wrong we have watched your prayer life jesus and we see the profound results that come you have gained mastery over the storms over the sea over the sick over spirits and we see you retreat to a place of prayer please teach us what you are doing because we are tired of guessing and jesus began to teach them the subject of prayer can i tell you the truth just praying arbitrarily it will take the mercy of God for you to gain mastery even through that approach to prayer you must be taught most believers do not understand the jurisdiction of prayer and the assignment of prayer in the believers life I cannot teach this enough I see people pray sincerely but very few people can bring forth results can I tell you you've heard me say it nobody leaves what works the reason why there is a lot of prayerlessness and struggle is that believers their laxity to prayer is a report card they are telling you i'm tired of faking this thing it's not working it may give me a consolation of feeling spiritual but i don't understand to what end this is about if prayer really works for you you will not leave it He spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. God never prayed as God, but when he became a man, he prayed because men pray. Now that Jesus ascended to heaven as a man, he still prays because all men pray. I've studied the subject of prayer a bit I can tell you and my assignment when I study things is to compress them to an expression that is very useful and applicable to the general body of believers and I found out maybe more but in my experience and I believe it is consistent from scripture and with scripture that there are four major assignments of prayer in the life of the believer I want you to write it and please never forget it no matter how many times you've written it write it down prayer according to scripture has four major assignments in the life of the believer number one the first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation in order of priority this is the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life. Unfortunately, most people have not tapped into this possibility that you gain mastery by evolving to superior levels of yourself, even in the place of prayer. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering say prayer you can grow and you can be transformed in the place of prayer i show you a believer who does not engage in prayer consistently forget about mastery you cannot gain mastery in this kingdom if you ignore prayer and if you do not understand the assignment of prayer to your life growth and transformation jude jude 1 and verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost prayer builds the believer prayer can turn a weak you into a strong you prayer can turn a very timid carnal you into a spiritual version of yourself men ought always to pray and not to faint number two i just want to touch it quickly so that we'll move to the other one making requests and obtaining promises this is the second assignment of prayer from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises every time you want to make requests and you want to obtain promises the platform for making this happen is prayer philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God 
making requests and obtaining promises number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in your life is for spiritual legislation what is spiritual legislation decrees creating possibilities in the place of prayer decrees creating possibilities job 22 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly job 22 and verse 28 thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways it, you shall decree a thing it happens in the place of prayer numbers 14 28 numbers 14 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in mine ears so will i do unto you not just as as much as you desire if you speak in my ears i will do it just like you have said it making decrees obtaining promises then spiritual legislation and then number four warfare and intercession the last dimension and jurisdiction of prayer in the life of the believer is for warfare and intercession ezekiel 22 from verse 29 to 31 very quickly ezekiel 22 the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully 30 and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it he said but i found none as a result 31 it says therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way i have recompensed on their head saith the lord these are the four dimensions of prayer i've done this teaching i'm i'm, I'm reminding you for this series that if you want to gain mastery in this kingdom you must understand prayer you must understand prayer men ought always to pray and not to faint and that at any point you pray you are doing one or more or all of these four things engaging in that which makes for your spiritual development obtaining promises is like cashing a check in the realm of the spirit in the place of prayer number three making decrees and establishing realities in your life number four engaging the ministry of warfare and intercession at any point you go to pray these are the things that are captured in the prayer life of a believer unfortunately please look up many believers do not pray not for transformation not as a platform to obtain requests and make petitions not even to make decrees over their lives maybe they do a bit of it in church and largely most believers do not engage in the ministry of warfare and intercession no wonder the life of many believers remain defeated in spite of the fact that they are zealous for god they love god with all their hearts but they continue to find out that nothing in their lives is a capture of the grace the wisdom the power of god you must tonight make up your mind that for to honor my desire to strive and to rise to the point of mastery i must engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle as a lifestyle prayer as a lifestyle not a strategy for disaster management prayer as a lifestyle for most people conditions have to provoke you to pray a negative report and you quickly come to pray and satan knowing that when he wants to attack you he will not make the thing look so bad because it will call for emergency and you go and pray so he will allow gradually gradually until your prayer life goes cold and he will attack you in one day and you will be surprised understanding prayer i believe in the power of prayer i am a product of the ministry of prayer we must submit ourselves to the ministry of prayer you must obtain grace from god i pray that you will believe the things that i'm teaching you that a believer who is determined
determined to pray with understanding please take note with understanding i submit to you that in the body of christ there is a lot of zeal people pray and pray and even if you are god the way you see people pray you are wondering why is this person's life like this i can tell you that most of our prayer is not guided by understanding for many believers we think is the stretch and the energy invested that is equal to results it is not so most believers do not pray according to scripture most believers do not pray according to knowledge there is such a thing as praying amiss have you read it in scripture apostle james said it is possible for one to pray amiss he says let that man not think he will receive anything from the lord prayer that every time you bow your knees to pray do you know how much of a blessing you will be if people know that your prayer really works so when you tell them i want to pray for you they are happy there are many people if you say i want to pray for you they just laugh at you because they know that you have not even sorted the subject of prayer you don't even understand what you are saying change that narrative with determination god wants the average believer listening to me to get to a point where you don't just pray but you understand the jurisdiction and the assignment of prayer whilst you are seated in one minute i'd like you to just begin to pray and obtain grace from god you are seated inside you are seated outside obtain grace let it be from the depth of your heart father i obtain grace i obtain grace to find my prayer altar back in the name of jesus the son of the living god someone is praying she brande cascadela hasibash magata prande gedebele kosiata i obtain grace i can pray negative things out of my life i can pray the will of god into my life and destiny You want to strive for mastery, you must understand prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible recommends, listen carefully. The Bible recommends an approach to prayer. The most effective dimension of prayer, second only to praying in the spirit, is praying the promises of God write it down please praying the promises of god isaiah 41 and verse 21 the word of god as you know defines the boundary of god's commitment to the believer that means god cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture let me repeat myself God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. The word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. It says, produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Do you know what this means? Approach prayer like a legal system in the realm of the spirit don't just say god bless me based on what don't just say god change my life you are god that's the kind of prayer we pray lord i'm tired of this situation arise oh god based on what he says produce your cause bring forth your strong reasons that means bring my word to me in prayer the scriptural basis that commits me to move on that wise are we together so the devil is plaguing your family plaguing your life and you say god i'm tired of this situation in jesus name i assure you you reported your situation but you didn't pray what is the basis lord bless me uh -uh. what is the basis even jesus himself i've taught you this when satan came to jesus he said it is written it is written is what gives strength to your prayer it is not what you are saying that gives strength to your prayer it is saying what is written when you say what you want it is not prayer 
when you say what is wrong it is not prayer is when you connect what you want and what is wrong to what God has said now that is prayer father your word declares that though my beginning be small my later end will greatly increase based on this truth in the name of Jesus I place a demand upon the grace that makes for advancement and increase now you are praying as simple as it sounds I can tell you many believers will keep shadow boxing and believing they are praying the promises of God I've taught you here that the word of God contains three things essentially every time you open scripture the word of God is a capture of promises principles and prophecies every time you open your Bible you are interacting with number one the promises of God number two the principles of the kingdom number three prophecy can I tell you this if you are a leader here of a prayer group you're a leader here of any prayer platform don't just tell people pray 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 bring the scriptures that support what you are asking if not I can guarantee you you wasted your time Hezekiah turned his face to the wall he would have said god this is not fair he said remember i have worked diligently in other words remember what your word says about those who serve your house can i tell you this if you know how to bring forth your strong reason you can go to bed you will commit god and and destroy dislodge anything that is not of god in prayer i speak life I speak life, you're gonna leave, oh my brother, my sister. I speak life, you are the head and not the tail, you will prevail. I speak life, don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live and not die. Listen to me. This thing you see is a very powerful song. But when you get to the place of prayer, you must find what God has said. Otherwise, you have not prayed. Father, I bring before you your word. Your word declares that life and death has been set before me blessing and cursing that I have the power to choose life. Now in honor to your word, I choose life. You are making decrees. It's being registered in the realm of the spirit. When you are saying it, demons are hearing you. And there is a basis for your confidence. What is written? Father, your word declares that a thousand shall fall by my side. And ten thousand by my right side. That none shall harm me. It is not just what is written that blesses you. It's what is written that you have found. And you engage with understanding, even in the place of prayer. I found your word and I did it. It was a joy and a rejoicing unto me. Is someone learning? So your first assignment when you want to engage in prayer, especially in understanding, is to make sure you have the patience to bring the scriptures that, begin, that, that become the basis of your defense and of making your petition. Don't just go and pray and ramble around. Internet has made it easy to pray efficiently. If you want to pray concerning your health, say for instance, you can go and just Google prayers concerning health. Different scriptures will come. It's your responsibility to filter it by the Spirit to the two or three. If you can find just two or three, that may be sufficient. Go to the place of prayer. Lord, I bring before you this. And you are praying. And while you are praying, you find out that things just begin to shift and change. Believers, please hear me. If we don't teach believers the power of prayer and gaining mastery even in the place of prayer many people will stop praying they will be tired and say this thing does not work the prayer that works is the prayer that is connected to scripture the prayer that work 
is the prayer that is derived of the spirit outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work let me repeat outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work it just becomes a motion of dissipating energy prayer is based on what god has said prayer is based on what you want that is connected to what god has said your first assignment is to find out what he has said that relates to what you want now you can go to the place of prayer with understanding the bible says this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us so it tells you there is a possibility that you will not be heard if it's not according to his will hallelujah number two what is the second principle that we need to engage if we want to strive for mastery please write this down understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom the first is understanding prayer the second is understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom I can spend weeks after weeks teaching this understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom that means your mastery in this kingdom is based on the degree to which you understand and engage the laws and the principles of the kingdom remember our initial scripture that he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 please someone is rising to a point of mastery in the name of jesus matthew 16 19 and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven say the keys of the kingdom please shout it one more time say the keys of the kingdom and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loose in heaven now king james did not do justice to what this really means the expression is that you have a a way of seeing what has been bound in heaven then you now bind it on earth give us amplified amplified will give us a clearer picture of what the bible says now listen i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind declare to be improper and unlawful that's what binding is on earth must be what is already bound in heaven are you seeing now and what is already bound whatsoever you lose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loose in heaven he's saying that you have the power by access to the keys of the kingdom through knowledge you can know what has been declared from the realm of the spirit to happen in your life and with these keys you bind and lose with this key you declare lawful and you declare unlawful as far as your life is concerned the keys of the kingdom you gain mastery by holding the keys of the kingdom in Luke chapter 11 and verse 52 Jesus calls it the key of knowledge Luke 11 and 52 he said woe unto you lawyers for ye have taken away the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourselves and them that were entering you hindered what wickedness you didn't enter into that realm of mastery through knowledge and those who now want to enter you are stopping them jesus said woe to you he cursed those who were trying to stop people from gaining exact spiritual understanding listen carefully every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you it means there is something wanting as far as your spiritual knowledge in that area is concerned every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you it means that there is no knowledge in that area or there is insufficient knowledge in that area leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 and moses said this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you 
there is what you must know that activates what you do and the bible says the glory of the lord will appear unto you believers listen to me your prayer this night should be psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5 psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5 it says show me thy ways O lord teach me thy paths verse 5 lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the god of my salvation on thee do i wait all day he said teach me open my eyes so god to see take away this age-long ignorance in my life i want to gain mastery to knowledge i'm tired of being afraid going out in the morning and wondering if i'll come back i must fortify myself with knowledge i'm tired of being afraid because of what is happening around the economy i can rise through mastery and gain knowledge of the laws of the kingdom most of us know that moses saw the glory of god but i will tell you the first thing moses asked for was not the glory of god exodus chapter 33 there were two requests that moses made the first was in verse 13 and the second was in verse 18 please let's look at it quickly now therefore exodus 33 13 i pray thee if i have found grace in your sight he says show me now thy way show me your way was his first request then you go to verse 18 and he now prays a second request and he said i beseech thee show me your glory there is a relationship between his ways and his glory show me your way show me your glory so the bible says he made his, made his ways known to moses but to Israel, they only saw his acts, the results, without gaining mastery on how to reproduce them. Hallelujah. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When I found this truth, I made up my mind that I was going to learn the laws of the kingdom, no matter how many. I will search for them one by one by one by one by one until I gain mastery. I will study and restudy and restudy until my life becomes a capture of these principles. Most of you have not mastered the laws of the kingdom. I submit to you. And I submit to you that it's not as easy as it sounds. It takes a lot of dedication and intention to say i'm not going to live my life shadow boxing i will learn these principles every facet of your life has the ways of god that control it finances your health longevity ministry influence there are laws of the kingdom please pay attention you see we live in very troubling times right now and so many people are already troubled and perplexed wondering what will become of my life your immunity in the days that we live is the fortification that the knowledge of these laws provide for you these laws can surround and secure you like chariots you can know of a truth that you will stand the test of time because these laws are backed up by god's own integrity Hear what I'm telling you. The spirit of death will look for everybody, including you. I don't mean to scare you, but it is the truth. If you do not know the ways of God to keep yourself alive, you will be surprised thinking you will not die till you die. The spirit of poverty will look for everybody, including you. Even Jesus said, Satan cometh to me, but he, does, he did not find anything. But he came. Are we together? In this kingdom, our defense is based on the power of the laws of the kingdom that we understand and we engage. For tonight, I will take two of these spiritual laws. Listen carefully and then we'll pray. We'll continue next week. I hope someone is learning. God of heaven.
these laws are so powerful and irrefutable that if you hang on to these laws and you learn these principles ladies and gentlemen your life will be a surprise even to you are we together the first law is the law i call it the sacrifice of total surrender just write it down the sacrifice of total surrender first corinthians 5 14 and 15 the sacrifice of total surrender second corinthians 5 14 and 15 please give it to us the sacrifice of total surrender it says for the love of christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead verse 15 please look up it says and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again the sacrifice of total surrender it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. matthew chapter 16 and verse 25 this is one of the most fundamental principles for the making of champions in the kingdom this law is a sacrifice it will take everything from you but it will give you everything you want to gain mastery in the kingdom learn the ways of god for whosoever will save his life what will happen to him you will lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake that person will find it let me tell you this you are not ready to do business with God until you die to yourself there are two things you have to conquer sin and self if you conquer sin you are still not free it has to be sin and self what an unbeliever needs to conquer is sin what a believer needs to conquer is self both must die for you to rise except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone i want to show you a very powerful but neglected spiritual law for as long as god is still something you use to make a good life for as long as god is still a deity that you use to be a champion you use him to get prosperity you use him to get this forget about certain levels of mastery not with power not with wisdom if it is the god of the bible that you want to see him stronger mighty in your life it must be the law of complete perfect unassuming surrender another word for it is death i know you don't like what i'm teaching you but please hear me if you are striving for mastery you have to obtain grace from god die to your desires die to your feelings die to whatever it is anything that is not the christ i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live there are many people who want to gain mastery over the anointing they just see wonderful things happen they want anointings they... no you have to be dead god does not trust you when you are alive to yourself your tendencies the variables are too many when you are dead he can give you money because if you give it if you keep one million on a dead man's body you come and meet it there but if somebody is alive even if he's sick and you keep one million there you will come and find seven hundred and fifty thousand he didn't go out yet the money left the tendencies of men are we together <laughs> let me tell you this there are many believers that take god for granted they think god 
just place abracatabra they pray all kinds of prayers they want high level power they want this level of grace they want influence and the price of death is a price they are unwilling to pay i tell you sincerely behind every strange dimension of mastery and grace is blood dripping on that altar the price for life i have taught you is death The size of God is so heavy, if you carry him alive in yourself, it will kill you. Listen to me. Many of you here desire higher levels of grace. You want to see God use you so mightily. You know what it means to die to yourself? It means there is nothing and no one that will ever have the ability to replace God in your life. To die does not mean to throw away your plans. It means to demote them to a point that God stands at the epicenter of your life. Lovest thou me more than this? Many believers do not know let me tell you if you like fast for one year if you like pray every day for the rest of your life if you like do whatever you do if you do not cross the gate of death forget about mastery and power with god when god comes to meet you he would demote everything that is him let me tell you how god demotes it he does not demote it by asking it to go down he will allow it to fail you one by one till you are left with nothing and you will come and say god i thought it's a job i thought it's this one how many of you can give up everything for jesus as you are sitting here? i know you will easily lift your hand and say me and i tell you don't be careless in lifting your hands because he will come to you It's a very difficult law that you need the grace of God to keep. Because remember, you've spent your life building your reputation. You've spent your life fine-tuning your ambition. And here comes the king of glory, pushing everything and wanting to take that place. It's as if you don't have a life again. Lord, you want to just come and damage my life and my self-worth? And he tells you, I don't kill. I only kill to resurrect. I give you another body a life of beauty and glory help those under the anointing you want to see the power of god you want to see the grace of god forget all these things i'm i know what i'm saying you package seed offering come and drop it he will not impact that realm on you our 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 generation just believes that money does everything just squeeze an envelope and drop it and you want to drop a realm of power that only death death can take you no sir there is a place for those things but that is not it total surrender total surrender that is the price your prayer now finds value your word study now finds value when that surrender is in place it's a sacrifice I beseech thee brethren by the message of God that you offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God he calls it your reasonable act of worship do you know what it means to be surrendered you lose the ability to tell God no to be totally surrendered means you have killed the option of no forever whatever you want my answer is yes whatever you say no more argument with you you are final authority in all things abraham take now thy son thy only son and abraham carried the son to go even jesus himself that was the law that he engaged he came to the earth in obedience to the father even when he didn't the bible did not hide the fact that jesus himself didn't want to die go and read your bible in gethsemane the bible tells us his prayer content father if it be thy will jesus 
shift this cup away from me but he said nevertheless not my will that is the language of men who have died lord truly this is what i've desired but nevertheless not my will not my will man of god not my will businessman not my will all this our intelligence where we push god out of our lives and say get out of the way god you don't know i am a nigerian we keep crash landing because we don't allow the wisdom of god to take precedence nevertheless not my will i will keep telling you this I love you so much with all my heart but if the God of heaven who asked me to close Koinonia now I stand before the God of heaven to tell you that this will probably be the last service that's it don't say you love him more he will test it more than what more than what is someone learning now you want to strive for mastery you have to get to a point where your mind is spiritually minded spiritually minded lord if it is for you there is nothing i would not do for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory lord i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king i want to be where you are gotta be where you are listen can i tell you there is nobody sitting here or standing here including the man speaking to you who has the power to give your all no you only have the power to give god access to and to be enthroned above it nobody has the power to give everything you can only give god access to take everything believe me there are things that are too precious in your life they cannot go you just have to give him access and say lord i don't even know what i'm doing but you must be my god ah. hmm. gotta be where you are gotta be where you are i want to be where you are you see let me tell you believers hear me when you get to this realm where nothing else matters to you anything that comes close to god has already failed because god is in a position jealously guarded god says you've done this for me i know the things you should want and look for and since you have prioritized me you will begin to see things you did not even pray for look let me tell you fearful is the man who pushes past that realm of pain and gets to that point where in reality and in experience you have enthroned jesus above any and everything there is nothing god will not give you believe me when i tell you this i've shared with you my experience where god told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you please help them if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there is nothing there is no one who compares with you i take pleasure when i worship you i take pleasure in worshiping i take pleasure hear me there are many of you looking at me right now you are only in church because of the need that brought you you are only in church because of something driving you one altar from your village pursued you and you ran to the house of god that is important you are welcome but can i tell you you must get to a point with god where you say lord i'm no longer playing games i mean it seriously whether you bless me or not you are still my god 
whether you prosper me or not you are still my god whether my requests are answered or not you are still my god i'm not playing this church business with you of exchange where i say give me breakthrough for my loyalty you are not a politician everything let it be yours can i tell you this it is a very painful decision but if you make that decision where everything belongs to him your life your reputation your strength your energy now you have entered the realm of power now you have entered the realm of favor now you have entered the left the realm of uncommon grace now you have entered the, the realm of wisdom where you become a friend of god it takes death to be a friend of god all these songs people just claim i'm a friend of god do you know what it means to be a friend of god can I hide this from my friend Abraham? The realm of friendship is the realm of revelation. He comes to you. Believers, hear me. We need to teach the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that God is not all about miracles. That God is not all about breakthroughs and signs and wonders. I'm not saying they are wrong but let me tell you if all we keep chasing after prostituting around just miracle breakthrough power result money no you have to move past those realm and get to a point where you say lord you are my everything there's no plan b there is no plan b we die here there is no plan b i'm not just trying to use you so that if something works no for as long as you have options to God, forget about gaining mastery. Forget about seeing his power and his glory. Man of God, if you still have plan B as to who empowers you, God will never come to you. The sacrifice of total surrender. So then death walks in us. That life will walk in you. Don't you think you just stretch your hands at sick people and say be healed and then they are healed. God is not a magician. Don't think you just sit down and say where is my destiny helper? Come and bless me. No. After this series, we are getting into the series where I am going to be teaching you on covenants. And you will learn, I will show you something very powerful that will change your life. When you go and meet occultists and these people who walk, they don't hear anything like word of mouth. I'm going to be loyal, I'll be serious and nonsense. You are just talking nonsense. Bring a piece of paper, they say nonsense. A paper that you can tear is your own blood you bring. I hope you know. For Satan to take you serious, you must bring your blood. And then they cut, they, they will open some. You've, you've seen these things in Nigerian films and the rest. And then they make some incisions and now Satan can be sure that you are serious with him what makes you think you just fold your arms and casually emotionally come to God and say God just give me one billion plus anointing for nations I promise I will serve you and you think God is so stupid you say I love you I died for you take it no there is a realm of death where he's the one who brings you alive you no longer live for yourself otherwise you can pray and pray and pray and god cannot trust you it will be a risk to give you that kind of power it will be a risk to give you that kind of pedigree it will be a risk to give you that kind of wealth why am i teaching you this i truly believe with all my heart that we're entering seasons where matthew 25 is about to be replayed in the church you know what matthew 25 is the parable of the talents god is coming like a mighty wind upon believers and he's beginning to trust them with things for nations i tell you this you will start seeing god give gifts to men in spectacular ways you will start seeing god trust men with graces for territories and nations the question is can your death afford you that gift He gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two talents. 
there are prophets that will rise like never before there are apostles that will rise like never before there are businessmen that will rise like never before there are politicians that will rise like never before you will see levels of power that will dumbfound principalities and powers but let me tell you the price is not just fasting the price is not just prayer the price is not just bible study the price is death all of you must be on that altar for that fire to come i lay it all down again to hear you say that i'm your friend help me find a way bring me back to you hey Hallelujah. by this teaching tonight god is already answering someone why is it that some things look hard god has seen that there is a measure of death you are unwilling to get into that is why certain levels of power and knowledge and wisdom may not easily come to you god has vetted you that was his listen the hand that wrote in the days of the king king i think that was belshazzar also also the hand wrote and hear what daniel interpreted the writing to be mene mene tekel ufesen he said you have been weighed so god weighs men you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting i weighed your motif i weighed your desire for wanting that business to work i weighed your motif for wanting the anointing i weighed your motif for wanting a great vision i found it wanting let me tell you sincerely there are some things in our lives it's not the devil causing it it is that the level of death we need to submit to to allow that magnitude of blessing we have not yet attained it businessman it does not take god anything to arrange systems that bring you millions and billions i assure you this God of heaven has shown once and again that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. But there is a level of death. You know what it means to sit down with hundreds of billions in your account, in cash and assets, and still roll on the ground before God? Go and ask Solomon what happened to him. Go and ask King Solomon. Solomon who saw the manifested presence of God twice. Everything he wanted he had. But he got to a point in his life where the Egyptian women turned him and he forgot the God of heaven. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes as a backslidden man. Death. You are striving for mastery. The Bible says, He that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. We need to pray and ask God to purge our hearts, vet our tendencies and remove anything that will stop that weight of glory from resting upon us. That is the prayer of the believer in this season. To sit down and say, Lord, you see I'm qualified for this is nonsense. You must cry and tremble before God and say, Lord, I don't even know my tendencies myself. Can I tell you the truth? I don't mean to insult you and I don't want you to feel bad. There are many of you who have been in this city for many years and many decades. You are well-meaning Christians and yet you don't seem to have passed beyond certain doors. I will tell you what is wrong. You have seemed to do everything right. There is something God has seen in your heart that if certain weights of glory rest upon you and that thing has not died, 
it will end up being a disadvantage it's like giving a little baby an ak-47 and showing the baby how to shoot the baby can turn it to himself and shoot and kill itself creating me a clean heart he said renew a right spirit you can have a wrong spirit not just a demon spirit a wrong spirit a wrong motivation renew a right spirit within me this is only the first law so that when you see the unusual exploits that God is doing through men and women across the globe please do not think it's just luck and do not think it's just impartation there is an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it a token of death my question to you is are you willing to just keep playing Christianity playing nominal Christianity or you are really ready to dive into this this river of seriousness and mastery with God to say Lord I know that the thoughts you think towards me are not thoughts of evil but of good to bring me a future and an expected end I'm ready to burn the bridges behind me as for you I am I am with you forever and for the rest of my life As for me, there is no plan B. There is nowhere else to go. The bridge is born, long burned. We live here, we die here. There is no plan B. You have plan B and C and D and E and E and F. That's why when you say, God, I give you everything, all the other plans say, what of us? We are here too. You must burn everything and say, Lord, it's all about you remember that our song jesus no this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are god and i surrender listen Tonight is not just a teaching. If I just stop on this law alone, it is sufficient for the night because we are going to take our time and pray. And in that prayer, you see, I'm going to leave you and God alone. I'll be doing my own here with my own God. And you are going to have to pray and say, Lord, you are the one who knows the truth of who I am. You are the one who knows the tendencies in my heart. You are the one who knows what is blocking what I see in my visions from happening in my life. There are, there are realms I should have entered now. There are dimensions I would have attained. There are some of you, everything you have seen in your visions, not one of it has come to pass because you are too alive in yourself. It's a risk for God to allow prophecy to manifest in your life. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the reins or the motif to give to every man. Jeremiah 17. Please give it to us 9 and 10. 9 and 10. We are going to cry a cry in this place. It's going to be a cry of repentance, a cry of handover, a cry of rededication. The meeting is still on. Tonight will not be fruitful if all we do is just talk about surrender. It's something that must be practical in our hearts. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10. It says, I the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins or the motif. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Businessman, I tell you, you have not handled the wealth of the kingdom yet until you die. God can take a man's prayer point and bring to you. You see, let me tell you this. This is the reason why often 
God will pick people who are nobodies and honor them. You know why? Because of their lowly estate, it is easy. They are malleable. They are not full of themselves. They, don't, they know they don't amount to much in themselves. So it's easy for them to give everything. And God says, I know you can't speak English very well, but your yieldedness is what I'm looking for. So I can make do with your limitation in English. I will still make you an apostle. I will still make you a prophet. I know that um, the way you are, there are disadvantages to your life. But what I'm looking for is the death and the yieldedness. Many of us bring our qualifications and everything to God and he says this is not what I'm looking for I know what I'm searching for a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead and he can pour that oil upon you and he can pour that grace upon you look let me tell you it's a spectacular sight to behold when you see a vessel that has been brought like a reed out of fire If you came to church tonight to encounter the God of the Bible, if you came to church tonight because you are serious with God, if you came to church tonight because you truly mean it with Jesus, if you came to church tonight because you know that the spirituality of your life is what controls everything around your life, then it was a good reason to come to church tonight. But if you came to church just to sign the register, that I'm in church today or you came to church to just escort someone for the fun of it I love you with all my heart but I may tell you it was not a wise reason to be in church I submit to you I will say this and we'll begin to pray people see the things that God is doing in and through my life and most times most people think this thing is just luck or this thing is just about anointing i think it's just an impartation that came it's not it's not true believe me when i tell you it's not all about anointing it's not all about just impartation go behind the scenes and you will find a pool of blood that still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar it is from that that covenant of sacrifice because sacrifice is a covenant psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice hallelujah i've had the privilege of ministering to many people who were involved in occultism or any of these satanic things and i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that they make to move them from level to level some of them will tell you they lie down and sleep on graves not in a vision physical graves imagine being in a graveyard only you in the night you are looking for power power for performance or invincibility now you are lying down you want to become an arm robber who can disappear in case they are looking for you and they will give you a strict requirement number one you are fasting day and night there's not like it's not like you are breaking in the night then you are lying down on a grave it doesn't matter what sound you hear you remain there and when they are done with those stringent things after seven days they come out and you just come out carelessly and say i know you can't stand against me let's think well oh let me tell you the truth whether it is through the demonic or through spirituality genuine spirituality sacrifice is a non-negotiable requirement you don't stand up you don't read your bible you are not serious you see someone who day and night he has interacted with spirits physically and he comes to stand and say i will kill you and he say god forbid i won't die you will be surprised our work in this kingdom is based on the covenants your covenant is a voice it can stand to amplify what you represent there are spirits when you speak to they know what they see jesus i know paul i know ask them what they are seeing that makes them count those names the sons of skiva had zeal they went to cast out demons just like that there are many believers who have not satisfied this law and they will go and carry charms and throw it away and say god forbid jesus has died he has won the victory and you find out that people start dying endlessly because they touch something that did not come by sacrifice 
redemption is real but the administration of mastery in this kingdom subscribes to the law of sacrifice not even jesus evaded it when jesus hung on that cross you thought the father would see him crying and says enough the father left him there till he died and that is the father who is love and the cry of jesus eloi eloi lamak sabachthani you thought the father would say no 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 my heart of love if jesus still died there can i tell you the truth just because god is love does not mean you will compromise on the law of sacrifice i respect the body of christ i don't criticize men of god it's not it's not in my my office or my call but i can tell you be careful what you hear this is why there is a lot of powerlessness in the body of christ we just get up with arbitrary things that cannot stand the test of time in the midst of the darkness and the evil that is in our world can i tell you the very altars that fight many families was initiated by sacrifice and when we talk of sacrifice we are not talking money because most of the church has reduced sacrifice to money so the moment you say sacrifice people just think offering and they think if i give one million that sacrifice the sacrifice is you not just the money no amount of money will replace you that you go back and you say lord it is not a difficult thing for you to change my story and grant me mastery it is not a difficult thing for you to lift me something must be the limitation and I share with you just one law for tonight. Death. Death. The sacrifice of total, complete surrender. Can you empty your account if he asks you to? <laughs> hmm. Can you pack all of your clothes? Can you give up your cars? Can you give up your houses if he asks you to? I'm not saying you should do it. You see now, all that emotional prayer now has been wiped away by what i'm saying because these are real things you are emo these are the strings that stop you from moving forward pilots will tell you that the lighter a plane is the easier and faster it can fly is that true the heavier a plane is in fact there are times that based on the size of the plane they can reduce the luggage down so that it does not affect it at flight seeing then that we are surrounded by this so great a cloud of witnesses he says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith hear this who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross is it in your bible who endured the cross and despised the shame there is endurance when it has to do with being a master and a giant you watch these olympians and you see what they do watch these boxers the world champion in everything sometimes you see them in the morning in a country that has ice and snow and you see them walking out they are sweating but they are walking out with awards in their house yet they are walking out and you are asking what else are you looking for that is what it takes to remain there can I tell you, whatever brings you to the place of grace is what will make you. you will even need greater weights of it. You see all these boxers boxing all these things around, and you are saying, These guys, don't you go and relax and do this. I like to watch champions in action, it inspires me. When you watch a master communicator, maybe speaking in an occasion or so and you see how these people they, they use english and i mean dominion over words they can capture your attention with uncanny mastery go and check what they do that led to that result you will go to their homes and see videos and dictionaries they go back to school again and learn english in their homes abcs and train themselves with discipline while others are sleeping go and ask the chef what makes him so exceptional that one meal one meal can be as much as a thousand dollars one plate what is in the plate find out respectfully speaking 
even our dear politicians whether you win or lose you are going to go through the labor of going around publicizing and doing all of these things that is some serious effort there go and ask some of the wealthiest ceos around the world you will see them in office over time even when those they have employed have gone home some of them will be there they may sleep in the office sacrifice it is only when it comes to the body of christ that we just believe that because jesus has done everything we just throw it away and just assume that it's at work in my life but you see that the results don't show dear people of god it's why the church remains powerless it's why the church remains and for many people all we know about sacrifice is praying and fasting and study of the bible so the moment i'm praying the moment i'm fasting the moment i'm studying scripture i just believe that i'm going through the sacrifice for greatness not so believe me there is something beyond prayer fasting bible study it is you being the living sacrifice upon that altar lord i have lost the ability to tell you no what you desire is my desire if you tell me go left left i go if you tell me go right right i go whatever you tell me that is it for me if you tell me leave ministry that is it if you say go back to ministry that is it have you gotten to that point believe me if you get to that point you will see something about god god will brand his hand upon your life in a way that will cause your world to marvel this teaching tonight is leaving you with two options one to continue doing christianity the way you are used to doing it or to say i take god seriously from this teaching tonight i may not know all it takes but this one law that i've found i have heard for some of you for the first time others a reiteration i'm going to subscribe let nothing and no one be so great in my life that it takes the place of god if that becomes your prayer and you mean it with all your heart you will count testimonies like the sons of the seashore because your life you things you prayed for and the ones you did not pray for you become a friend of god let's pray Don't forget what I have told you. That in this season, I discern very strongly that the giver of all good things is coming to his body again. And there will be strange distribution of new things. God is going to come to believers. There are people who will be enthroned at higher levels. A thousand cubits is about to be measured over many believers. And some will shift into deeper levels of power some will shift into deeper levels of influence some will shift into deeper levels of wealth make sure you subscribe for what God is doing through sacrifice so that you don't become part of those pointing fingers at people and saying don't mind them it's like they are just lucky or no 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 you must make up your mind is someone ready to pray I give you two three minutes alone with God before we do a general prayer please no distraction let's respect what God is doing I want you to cry before the God of your salvation Lord purge my heart purge my heart bring me to a point of total surrender may nothing be too much to give you may nothing be too much to hand over to you you gave me everything the grace to give you everything all our viewers make sure you are praying crying to the god of heaven who are striving for mastery and in addition to understanding the ministry of prayer and its capacity to build the believer we must understand death death to your ego death to your reputation especially make sure you pray lord this my ego this my reputation take it out of the way i desire to serve you acceptably My passion for titles, my passion for name, my passion for this and that. Take it out of my life. I want to see you exalted. That is all I desire. Jesus exalted. Jesus enthroned. Enthrone him beyond your business. Enthrone him beyond Koinonia. Enthrone him beyond Joshua Selman. 
Lord, we exalt you, we enthrone you. Purge our hearts, purge our hearts, purge our hearts, purge our hearts. Grant us the grace. Let nothing, let no one, let no lifting be able to take your place in our lives. That which you want is what we also want. Go ahead and pray. Speak to him. You're contending for power with God. Lord, I love the ministry, but I exalt you above it. I love the business, but I exalt you above it. I love my wife, my husband, my children, but I exalt you above them. I love the visions you are giving me, boy. I exalt you above them. One more minute. You are praying to the God of heaven. The one secret behind the strange liftings of man. The one secret of the kingdom behind the mighty and the marvelous hand of God over the life of an individual you will see God arise for you in ways that will surprise you he will give you even the desire of nations because you would have become his friend hiding no secret from you opening you to deep truths in the spirit empowering you in unusual dimensions wisdom beyond the realm of men hallelujah 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 listen when the lord began to speak to me about the thing he's doing in the body of christ in this season how that he's distributing newer and greater levels of grace God is trusting people with wealth you have never seen. See, let me tell you this. This is not going to be about business alone. I understand principles of value, but this one is God trusting people, seeing that I, my last treasurer betrayed me, that I'm still looking for more. And now you are saying, Lord, I will be a faithful steward, and God will give you what is equivalent to the wealth of nations. There are levels of anointings, that will make men will walk like gods upon the earth it is true that their words become like the word of god spectacular manifestations of his power that you look at them you know that this is a man backed by a strange altar with blood dripping on it that we will stop being storytellers in the body of christ and indeed will be proof producers even by the spirit the secret beyond fasting beyond prayer is death there is nothing in my life today i submit to you by the grace of god that i cannot give god there is nothing in my life today that i cannot drop at the altar nothing the worst that can happen to me in this life is that i die and even in death we have cheated it already in victory don't say i am sent to everybody potentially yes but who are the beneficiaries of my solution jesus himself when he came he said he was here to seek and save the lost that means if the father had found you he didn't have a ministry for you to seek and to save the lost there are many of us here you do not know those who have been mandated to be the beneficiaries of your solutions as a man of god you do not even know those you are sent to as a businessman you do not even understand your clientele you have to know those you were sent to when moses had an encounter with god god did not say moses take this rod roam around anywhere you see human beings just tell them you have met the god of the bible 
watch this the nature of his training was with respect to where he would be sent to is someone is someone learning now yes moses i am sending you to egypt here is your mandate deliver them from the hand of pharaoh take them out of egypt into a land flowing with milk and honey precision and to meet pharaoh i would have to train you very powerful who are the beneficiaries of your solutions can i tell you every mandate and any call whether in ministry whether in business there, there are targeted beneficiaries that you must understand. It can be an age range. It can be a vision. It can be a gender. You have to know your clientele. I know those God has sent me to. Every time I see people who need encounters and revival in their life. Every time I see people who have gone down spiritually, you are calling for my attention. Every time I see someone who has not been saved, you have not encountered Jesus, you are calling for my attention. Every time I see someone who is spiritually down, there is no fervency, no fire, no appetite for spiritual things, you are calling for my attention. Everywhere I see demons oppressing people, you are calling for my attention. Don't invite me. Me. just show me someone oppressed that is my invitation based on the mandate show me someone who is sick that needs a demonstration of the power of God show me a territory that needs revival and fire you are calling me question what calls you there are many people who do not know what calls them what calls you for some of you you are being raised as kingdom financiers that everywhere you see poverty and lack and the house of God suffering, something should call you. But you are not able to create any system to be excellent. Why? God cannot even use you to be a kingdom financier because you do not know the beneficiaries of your solution. Don't downplay what you are hearing. We have a lot of politicians here. When they make you a house member, you are not a house member of Nigeria. You are not a house member or a senator they 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 define a region is that true and your your assignment principally is to that region who are the beneficiaries of my solutions so that you can invest your time not knowing this will help you, will make you build wrong systems. You are going to be ministering to people you are not gifted for, people you are not graced towards. Are we together now? Very, very important. I sing. I'm not ignorant as far as music is concerned. I was once a music director, but my call is not to be a worship minister to go to the nations. So I will sing, but I will sing while I am preaching. There is nobody who has invited me to come and sing a special number. Yet if you invite me, I must almost always sing. Why? Because that gift can find expression as a subset of the bigger picture. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you sincerely from this night. May God lead you to find those who are the beneficiaries of your anointing. The beneficiaries of your call that that gift that he put within your spirit you must find those you are sent to please sit down man of god listen there are many people today who are genuinely called of god but they have not been able to identify those that god put the solution in them for there is, respectfully speaking, there, there is a ministry called the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. How many of you know that ministry? Now, do you know that that is a powerful ministry that has changed lives? The ministry came targeted to business people and people of influence because the, the founders discovered that it was difficult to minister to people of influence. So the whole idea 
is to evangelize people and keep them on fire for God and then to use their influence for kingdom come. That is what defines that ministry. You will not see full gospel businessmen having a deliverance service or going around um, having a crusade from city to city. But you will see them hold a meeting with only 30 people. And based on the definition of their ministry, they are highly successful. The blind pursuit for general results that creates competition, creates frustration, is because we have not defined there are businesses that do not have more than 100 clients, yet they are billion naira and billion dollar businesses because the nature of the business, it does not serve everybody. Is that true? Who are the beneficiaries of my solutions? Question three. Is someone learning tonight? Question three. Are you ready? What tools do I need? This is powerful. Now I'm, I'm answering questions that will help me build systems and structures around my life. Question three. What tools do I need? Your tools talk about your skills. Your tools talk about your resources. Your tools talk about your relationships. What skills will I need? Don't just create systems out of nothing. What tools do I need? Please look up. In this ministry, for instance, because of the nature of what God has called us to do, we know that to be effective, there are tools that we need and there are resources that we need. Are we together now? That is what birthed the structuring of every department. We know that there will be need for a media capture. And so there are media people who are walking all around as I'm speaking. We know that the nature of the ministry and the size of the ministry will necessitate a, a very intelligent security system at the highest level possible. And so there is every kind of security system imaginable put in place. You cannot create systems until you know the tools that you need. What do you need to succeed? There are some of you, can I tell you, what you need to succeed in your assignment is billions and billions and billions. That will now help you to know what to put in place. The kind of structures that will drive you. What tools do I need? Please look up. If you are Moses, remember you need a rod. Never move until you find the rod. If you are David, don't stand before Goliath until you have your sling. And make sure there are five stones, not an empty sling. Is, someone speak, is God speaking to someone here? Yes. What tools do I need? Look up, please. If you are a man of God and you know that you need a high level anointing, a high level manifestation of the power of God in your life, then you see, knowing that you need those tools, you can now create a system that makes sure that your spiritual life never goes down. Because you need, at every given point in your life, the nature of your call will demand that you are on fire all the time. To be instant in season and out of season. Number four. Are you ready? The fourth question you have to ask, and especially for organizations, but then it also applies to your life, is who does what? The fourth question you must answer, who does what? Distribution of tasks. You will fail in life if you do everything. Most leaders fail in life because they cannot trust anybody. Who does what is a question you must ask. As wonderful and great as this ministry is, there are things I don't come close to. You know why? I rather do my work of oversight and allow those who are skilled and exceptional to do it. I can play this keyboard, you see, but I cannot play this keyboard as effective as this person is playing. I can play drums. I can play most of the instruments here. 
but I, I have not mastered to that level of efficiency and combining both of them will not make me efficient so there is a definition we are all on stage and we are all ministering but who does what husband who does what to avoid trouble wife who does what children who does what man of god who does what there has to be a proper definition of tasks i will never come for koinonia and cross my leg when it's time for the word you see me come and i sit down quietly the worship team doing their thing testimonies everyone doing their thing because i have my own slot in the program too i can't get up arbitrarily and say this is my ministry all of you sit down even if i'm going to veto for a cause i owe you an explanation to say the holy spirit came in and you will know this is an exception i told you compromises only make sense when standards are in place now please look up i'm saying this respectfully you know that i love the body of christ i'm teaching you and as many who would want to listen there are many ministries and many organizations that do not have order because there is no definition of who does what the man of god can do anything while it is while the service is going on you will see papers flying around sorry you are the one who is going to raise offering are you aware and the person i didn't prepare it's okay just use second corinthians chapter eight and nine or nine and eight and you see those discussions and the person comes up and he's looking confused and wondering hoping he's right and he says praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord and all kinds of things are happening and then finally you raise the offering and you don't know what to do there is no order three people will come and raise offerings and it's as if they, are, they were trained by three different people they don't know what to say no standards no systems can you let me tell you this systems should be greater than individuals so that it does not matter who is doing the work the result is the same an example is your car it does not matter whether it's the husband driving or the wife is driving because it is not them that define how the car moves a system there is the mechanics of the car are we together when you go to any of our banks across the globe you will almost find similar or the same experience yet they are sacking people and employing newer people do you know why they are not really concerned about the individuals because they know that the individuals will be immersed into a system that will limit their emotional interferences listen i'm teaching you this because this is how global brands spread they spread through systems so you can see apple kenya apple south africa apple nigeria apple uk individuals who may have never met themselves until and unless they're having an executive meeting and yet their results are similar you know why there is a common code that governs them when you call somebody a doctor say a consultant surgeon the person may be in abuja there may be another consultant surgeon in lagos another co consultant surgeon in adamawa three of them can literally meet the first time and meet inside a surgery room and none of them will be afraid of one another because there is a system that made them what they are how about the lecturers that teach students some of them talk fast some of them talk slow some of them look dull even though they are intelligent respectfully speaking some of them are very smart some of them have all kinds of temperaments but regardless the personality differences the students will still become what was desired because the system in this case the manual the modus operandi is greater than the personal biases of the lecturers do you know why i am sure that you will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder it is not because of the person standing before you this is it Mm. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. I can still teach you, even though I don't know your background. I can still teach you, even though I know you may not have an advantage by default. Regardless the situation, this was built. To survive and produce a champion out of everyone regardless the limitation if I teach you my opinions 
I will only teach those whose life and history is similar to mine. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise even unto salvation. Is God helping someone? So who does what? Please look at me. There are some of you, the reason why you are inefficient in your life today, right now, as you are listening to me, is because you are doing many things that your level of growth, you are supposed to have outsourced those things and given other people. There are some of you right now, respectfully speaking, with the level to which God has lifted you and helped you, you should not be the one roaming around to wash your clothes. The three hours you are spending washing your clothes by reason of your lifting now is a waste of time. You will say it's humility. I respect you, but you are wasting time. Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Most of the efficient people in life, they write everything that they need to excel and begin to allocate responsibilities. This was what was killing Moses in the Bible. If you read, if you read, every time there is increase, you will have to shed off a lot of responsibilities and allot it to people you can trust so that you focus on the things that matter. Moses was wearing himself, counseling people from morning till night, and Jethro, his father-in-law, said, Mr. Man, you're about to kill yourself. Find people and set them as captains over hundreds, thousands. The same thing happened in Acts chapter 6. The apostles were overseeing the sharing of food and there was a problem when you read from verse 1 among the Grecian women and all of that and the disciples said no, 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 no. The apostles, you are distracting us. We are about a serious assignment right now. It says look among yourself. Give it to us please. Now verse 2 or 3. It says look among yourselves seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. It is business, but not your business. This business. What is our own business? Verse 4. It says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry. Let me tell you this. Please look up. Respectfully speaking, there are many men of God whose spiritual fire has gone down and who fail woefully now as far as the ministry of the word is concerned because administrative duties have become a burden on them and they cannot trust anyone. Can I tell you, when you are overly afraid of everybody, the problem is you. You have to take the risk to trust people. How were you when God started using you? All of us are students in training and sometimes you have to stamp your feet and just risk it. This is very powerful. There are things in my life that I minimize, I don't get myself involved with. Some of the brightest and the finest leaders, globally speaking, they minimize themselves to two, three or four important tasks and they give their all to it. There's a statement they used to say, Jack of all, Jack of all trades, master of none. It's true. Let me tell you the truth. You cannot effectively lead a ministry like this if you are the one involved in checking the offering and finding out where it went to and then you quickly find out where the security people are and then while you are here, you are looking. There are things you cannot do. Your times of fasting, your times of prayer. Do you know what it takes to prepare one series? You can see some of the things I'm bringing. Those definitions did not come in the place of prayer. I studied. <laughs> of course, there are things that come in. But are you getting what I'm saying now? There is, there is, you cannot imagine. Believe me, I'm not exaggerating. The materials that I consult for one sermon. I preach an average of three sermons per week. Aside from school of ministry and a lot of other things. You cannot have the time to do a lot of things and still excel. Please define who does what some of you have grown-up children in your house you are still washing your car you are still washing your clothes call those children and tell them to behave themselves well and this is not about abuse or bully this is about training even if you are prosperous 
if they cannot do anything they should follow you and learn so that the day you are not there the system is in place can i tell you hold on you know that something is wrong when the system collapses in your absence every time your absence creates such a big vacuum something was wrong with the systemic nature of yourself or your organization i used to say it when i was in zaria that even if i'm not there for one year the only thing that should be missed is the unique expression of the grace of god upon my life but it should not collapse if the ministry collapses there i failed woefully so if i don't come for koinonia for one month the only thing you should miss here is the unique expression of my grace not edification not growth if growth stops with my absence then i failed listen let me tell you this some of you god is speaking to you if you do not build systems around your life you will not be able to maximize destiny you will fail in many other areas of your life because many things will depend on you wrongly so systems number five don't be tired though please listen your destiny needs this when a patient goes to the doctor sometimes they'll say swallow a drug he doesn't like it but the doctor says swallow it i know what i'm giving you and sometimes you turn as you are swallowing one you are also receiving injection you don't like it but you need it what some of you are hearing now you need it for some of you you don't need it now but you need it keep it no matter how much light i give you you will not need it when you are in the day but when the night comes you will quickly go back some of you are about to build businesses some of you are about to build ministries you may not need now what i'm giving you but pay attention to it and you will thank me some of you this is what you need right now we're about to talk about these areas of your life shortly question five are you ready the fifth question you must answer what is the most important aspect of the vision to focus on now what is the most important aspect of the vision to focus on now this talks about emphasis can i tell you god is not doing everything in your life at every time god is a god of times and seasons and he operates based on emphasis there is always something God is doing now. There is always something an organization is doing now. Yes, there are many things in the blueprint, but God works one by one. Woe betides a man who cannot find the emphasis for his life and destiny now. Please look at me. There are some of you, based on what God is doing in your life now, you should not be reading books on finances, reading books on leadership. You are just starting with God. The emphasis should be pressing into God with fasting and prayer. You got born again late. Now you got filled with the Holy Ghost just a few months ago. Trying to compress everything you, you need. There are things God needs to achieve in your life now. Every spiritual man who was built well will tell you how God started with us. God didn't start with finances and systems and all of that. He started with Jesus. He started with hunger. He started with fire. If you know this, even as a man of God, you will know how to disciple and train people. You don't just get people born again and the next thing you are teaching them financial principles. Next thing you are teaching them leadership principles. I'm not being sarcastic, but within the limit of how growth happens, there are things line upon line, precepts upon precepts. Is God speaking to us? Mm. I remember when I started with God, there was nothing about finance pressing. In fact, there was even nothing about the mind, mental transformation. It was fire, presence, encounter. Lord, show me your glory. Visions almost from morning till night. It's as if you can't rest. You put your head down, an angel. You put your head down, some, and you are wondering, God, what are you doing with my life? You lift your hands, you put it down. Your hands are shaking, fire, cold sensation. You don't even know the name of what is happening. You lie down to sleep. You don't know whether the weather is cold or it's just you. These are, there are all kinds of impartations happening within your spirit, man. But a season will come 
when God will say now son you have done well in terms of your growth now you need to begin to study on your mind because your spiritual health alone will not produce victory holistically so God started introducing us to other people and at first some of us resisted it because it did not carry the semblance it looked like a betrayal to our fire like some of you is happening to you now as you are listening to me it looks like hearing what you are hearing is a betrayal to your passion for revival soon you will know that the sound system that you put on that crusade ground will require systems and organization for you to preach well are you learning now we love the lord with all our heart the first time we went on crusade there was not so much about administration but goodness there was fire and signs and wonders we finish the preaching of the crusade but we're owing money for sound say systems <laughs> spirituality did not fail but there was system failure <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, God will complete everything that needs to be completed in your life to make your Christian experience holistic. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look up please. God is not doing everything every time. He has emphasis. And as a leader, you must know what is God's emphasis in your life. You must know what is the emphasis of your business at this point. When Koinonia started, please look up. I used to share with the people those days that the assignment was to enthrone Christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. But first things first. The first phase of the ministry had to do with building people. So there was not so much emphasis to aesthetics and structure and all of that. It didn't mean that we didn't believe in excellence. But in order of priority, are we together now? So people could sit on the ground. People could sit in an auditorium that maybe didn't have the best of ambience. Because one day it will happen. My philosophy as given from God was that when you build people, the people will build the structure. And thank God for that wisdom that people were built and some of those people that were built today are the ones serving doing marvelous and mighty things first Corinthians 10 23 first Corinthians 10 23 it says all things are lawful if you look at it from amplified it says all things are permissible all things are we are free to do anything we please it says but not all things are helpful expedient profitable wholesome all things are legitimate but not all things are constructive very powerful you must know what god is doing per season in your life look at me there are some of you even though you are great men of god revivalists you will get to a point in your life where god's emphasis with you is your finances don't neglect it just because you feel that okay now um, I should just focus on if, uh, 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 God can push down on you and you will find out that every book every message God will keep recommending it for the next six months is going to be your finances don't fight it if you jump that school of the spirit you will pay for it in the future in a way you are not prepared for For some of you, even though you are great men and women of God, you will get into seasons where the emphasis for you will be leadership and organization. Now you may be doing well in terms of the delivery of your spiritual solutions, but you need to now begin to build the structure. May you discern what God is doing at every season of your life in the name of Jesus. And for those of you who run organizations here, do not say we are multi-purpose doing everything. No. Look at me, please. How many of you know that in every house, there are many doors inside that house, but there is always a door called the main door. Is that true? The main door is what leads you and then you can leverage on other doors. Everybody who runs any successful conglomerate, there is one thing that stands them out and then they use the leverage of that product to now build all other products. 
when you talk about bill gates and microsoft microsoft is not the only thing he does but that is what brought him out that gives him a leverage to do everything when you talk about warren buffett berkshire hathaway that's not the only thing he does he's not only an investor there are many other things he does but that is what brought him out when you talk about all of Zuckerberg, it's not only Facebook and all of these things. There are many other things they do. There are many sports people who also have clothing lines. But it is just if what brings them out. You must know the area of emphasis per season. I can teach on finances. I can teach on relationships. I can teach on several things. But the core area of fire and grace and the area where the mantle speaks you see is in the area of encounters communicating the wisdom of the spirit steering revival helping people to have spiritual intelligence do not major on minors and minor on majors what is most important in your life now what is the most important aspect of your vision and finally, number six. Are you ready for this? What are the major limitations, pitfalls, and distractions to avoid? I'm showing you five questions you must ask and answer because the systems you are going to build will be in honor to the answers that you find from this question. What are the major limitations, comma, pitfalls, and distractions to avoid first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 what are the major limitations because one of the assignment of systems and structures is to keep you true to your values to keep you true to what you stand for and you must be able to know the limitations the pitfalls and the distractions to avoid it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour please look up there are many pitfalls that can destroy you spiritually business wise politically and one of the ways you manage your growth and your result is by creating systems around your life respectfully speaking you cannot call me and say ah um apostle how are you um can you just travel to this state and come to so, -so pay we just want to enjoy ourselves maybe i would have been able to do that years ago but right now there are systems around my life that help me to manage my consistency and manage my results are you getting what i'm saying now yes maybe the person who is calling you plans to kill you for instance and because you don't have systems and structures you get to a point in your life where you will need security clearance you will need several or it's not policing you it's managing you so that you remain effective for those who god has called you to do many of us don't have systems around our lives because we do not know the pitfall if there is the pitfall of pride in your life show me the system you have created if there is the pitfall of all kinds of lusts and all kinds of um, um, wrong relationships that can come and introduce you many people were destroyed because when god started promoting them their relationships changed they now found out that 90 percent of the wealthy people around them were godless people and because you have to go for all your friends birthday party they now traveled and went to several countries and saw things that were against their convictions but they could not leave it because that's what happens at this level systems can protect you beyond your imagination is God speaking to someone especially when it has to do with rising even financially the moment God begins to lift you, the dynamics of your living will change immediately. There are relationships you don't need but will force their way around your life. Systems will give you the legitimacy to say no to many things that may be good but are not useful for your life. For instance, if somebody invites you to come, respectfully speaking, for some birthday party or some occasion somewhere, 
that may not honor your convictions if you say no they will ask you based on what systems give you the legitimacy are we together now yes Is someone learning what I'm, I'm teaching you? You see how powerful this is? Systems are very powerful. They can protect you. Write this down. You must build a code of conduct and a code of operation around your life and in your organization out of these answers. The answers to these six questions you must build a code of conduct out of these five or six questions you must build a code of conduct and build a code of operation don't just have a code of conduct alone a code of conduct guides your character a code of operation guides how you do things it takes more than being a man of character to excel a code of conduct guides how you behave but a code of operation guides how you do things. Hallelujah. Yes. Years ago, let me tell you this. I, I got to a point in my life, respectfully speaking, when God started lifting me and doors were opening. And until that time, I, in my conservative way, I didn't think that I would need a system to manage my itinerary and all of that and people would call me and sometimes there could be five six calls for ministrations the dates clashing i may not even remember i would just tell this person yes oh you are my friend i will come yes and sometimes i would find out that i had agreed for three ministrations within the same time not knowing and the people i found out that i was damaging useful relationships in my life because now I would say yes to this and find out I said yes to this person. Now, how would I choose? I knew that my failure was a revelation that I had risen to a point in my life where allocating that. Be and then because, you know, starting ministry, most of my ministration was among friends and people who I was building a relationship. With. And there were times that there, there are legitimate reasons to say no, but I may not have the courage to say no. So you allow the system to say no for you. you. You see how powerful it is now? There are many things you cannot say no to as an individual. So you leave the no to the system. Most of you have, have carried needless enemies in your life today. Because instead of allowing the system you built to say no, you kept saying no by yourself. You will have too many troubles in your life with people. You will, you, will, you will lose out on many precious relationships if you don't create a system around what you have to do. This is very powerful. Build a code of conduct and a code of operation around your life. Now, I'm going to be listening. This is the final thing we're going to do and then we'll pray. I want to guide you a bit as to the various aspects of our lives. I don't just want to deal with systems and structures arbitrarily, but I want to zoom down on a few things that you can take home. You can know that this is, this is the problem and this is the solution around this area of my life. Let's start with our spiritual lives. Write it down, please. How do I build a system? That maintains my spiritual growth and maintains my spiritual fire most of us rise up today and go down tomorrow we are not able to sustain that spiritual momentum do you know why because everything that has to do with our spiritual life is based on emotion please look at me how many of you know that if you depend on your emotion to read your Bible if you depend on your emotion to pray if you depend on your emotion to go to church you will not do any of that is that true What is the system you have put in place for your Bible study? What is the system you have put in place for consistent prayer? Anybody who tells you prayer is comfortable and convenient lie to you. 
prayer has nothing to do with emotions you have to create a system that not even your emotions can easily tamper with hallelujah imagine with me that i come up here on sunday and i say ladies and gentlemen um i know you love me and i love you too but i want to be very honest with you today we're just going to pray in tongues and sing because um I needed to sleep I've, I've, I've been traveling around and I'm so tired and I don't have anything to tell you I thank you for coming here since 10 o'clock in the morning and since 8 30 struggling for space and sitting down and uh, come again may the Lord bless you I'm sure that after two or three weeks I'll be prepared how how irresponsible will that sound now don't you know that I live a busy schedule and yes not even you will excuse me for that carelessness why because preparing my sermon to make sure god's people are built has been systematized are we together now i don't allow my emotions to prepare sermons i will fail miserably there are many meetings that line up before me and so there are systems there are time periods where i'm about studying and preparing whether there is rain whether i am tired i can pamper myself afterwards but as far as that is concerned I must be instant in season and out of season someone shout amen. amen please look up our parents many of us here our parents and our elderly ones here used to practice a system called morning devotion is that true now that didn't seem to be a system that um, some of them would not pray in tongues for one hour nor finish their bibles cover to cover but notice that every time they woke up the first thing they did their bibles will usually be at the side of the bed is that true and because of that they were in contact with scripture every day for 50 years 41 years now some of us have come as zealous people who love the lord you can pray for eight hours one day and not pray again till after three weeks you can study the bible emotionally trying to finish 15 chapters in one day and then leave your bible alone then repent after two months when you hear a message like this and go back again everybody says systems please look at me you can never become spiritually alive and robust allowing your emotions to define the level of your spiritual commitment do you know why many many people who work in corporations and in the civil service no matter how res respectfully speaking how um, um, how draggy they are they are still able to maintain that because there is a register that you sign in when you come in is that true and they will query you there is a supervisor waiting for you so you can return home by 12 even attend a vigil sometimes end by four or five and as tired as you are you know your salary is at stake your job is at stake there are bills to pay it will fuel the energy you will stand up and bath and be on your way systems are supervisors they supervise compliance you must create a system around your spiritual life what is the system you are built to make sure you study the bible every day and for some of us when it has to do with bible study that is even a discussion for another day because you get up and there is no definition as to what you are becoming today you just feel like um let me read proverbs i'm not in the mood for any history you just open proverbs chapter one and with sleep in your eyes you'll be reading the same verse for 20 minutes you think you have finished it you will come back read it again because there is no system and then the next day you read john chapter 2 and then when you wake up and stumble across a message online and it fires your spirit you quickly go back to revelation read something small on rapture you don't grow that way your growth is not methodical this is the reason why respectfully speaking we have many people who go to church but there is no growth because people do not grow methodically some of our parents who would read five chapters according to that devotional gradually gradually they may finish their bible in five years six years it may not be so much relative to your passion and your press but it was systematized can i tell you this if you have not outgrown um if you have not outgrown 
being guided to read a scripture by designing your own structure go back to it in fact i don't have a problem with devotionals they are a healthy start and they can help you of course in truth you will need more than that if you really want to press to certain dimensions but it is it is fair enough for you to start Someone met me and said, Apostle, I need to grow spiritually. And I confess that my study of the word and my prayer is not, I'm not really benefiting. I'm not really growing. How can you help me? This is what I told the person as a recommendation. I said, every message that is preached here in Koinonia, let that be your study for that week. At least start from there. So you listen to the message and you use it for Bible study. You use it to build. Now you settle down and look at the scriptures. If you even just focus on what is being taught per week, many of us have almost everybody's message in the world. You have everybody's devotional, but you have not listened to any of them. When we go to your library, there are books from even generals that are long gone, and you will impress us by what is in your library, but you've not even read up to 1% of it. You will not grow that way. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to maintain my spiritual life by systematizing my approach please look up there are some of you here you cannot pray for one hour every day now the the value of prayer is not in the timing the value of prayer is in the efficiency and the fellowship but then timing is a discipline that can help you believe me when I tell you this some of you don't have the discipline to wake up in the night use an alarm clock an alarm clock is a system oh apostle it's an embarrassment to my discernment please use it save yourself all this pride for nothing and get a good alarm clock if you plan to wake up by two o'clock let it start by 1 30 so you can struggle for 30 minutes whatever it is you can be sure that by two you are awake it's a strategy can i tell you this the days that are coming will depend on your spiritual health man of god the ministry that you run cannot rise beyond your spiritual health that is the truth koinonia if my prayer life is just one hour you will not grow i assure you at this level of my life it's not pride if i pray for only one hour praying for you what god has done will i finish saying thank you in one hour There are many homes here that don't, that don't have a system for their spiritual upkeep. Respectfully speaking, don't feel bad. We're dealing with systems and structures. Anybody who feels like praying in the house just calls for prayer and then everybody just respects it. You can't grow that way. The home needs to have a system, whether it's in the morning or night or both, so that any visitor who comes to stay with you meets an existing system so people don't ship in babylon to your house and come and destroy your home when they come and meet a system they will respect it in this house by six o'clock we wake up well in my father's house i wake up by nine i respect you but you may have to comply with what is available now six o'clock let's begin to pray father we thank you and everybody is praying in the house how about bible studies I'm sorry to say it, but did you know that many children do not learn about God from home? They don't build character from home because there is no system for that. Our society continues to be destroyed today because we are hoping that religious, educational and governmental institutions will do the work that family should start. No systems. The reason why you are well nourished is because there is a system subconsciously you know that there will be breakfast lunch and dinner for some of us who fast you look at your loved ones those days when when we really started learning the things about fasting in the seminary we would they would combine the breakfast and lunch nobody eats it just because you are fasting length period will come and go but by night that revenge mission the breakfast in the morning and the lunch and dinner if anybody touches your breakfast or your lunch because you are spending time with God, when you are back from that mountain, you will now flog it out with them. Some of you are like that. They go to the kitchen, whose food is this? It's my own, leave it there, I'm fasting. 
even the gifts that visitors bring the yam the fruits leave it there once it's 5 30 as you are praying in tongues you are strolling around the kitchen six on the dot hallelujah now look at me please look at me how many of you here have a system for your renewal with god most of you do not have a system for retreats you don't even know what retreats are respectfully speaking some of you how can you as a leader even a spiritual leader not have a system of retreat it's not only when you have an attack that you need a retreat out of the seven days in a week what is the strategy you have put in place to make sure your fire is not lost monthly do you have a strategy quarterly do you have a strategy during your birthday what happens i just know that people celebrate me uh-huh spiritually don't you know that that is a defining moment in your life those days in zaria we used to practice it and even train people that your birthdays were very prophetic seasons in your life you will see people go on fasting three days four days to their birthdays they can celebrate only when they've sorted destiny with god but today as simple as that was many people encountered god and found purpose please return return in the name of jesus christ this is not just entertainment many of you this is what started depleting your spiritual life you are a man of god the fire you used to command before was because maybe you were on campus or where you were you were around fellow believers so there was a system of check and balance now that you are alone your prayer life gone down everything gone down is why when most people finish from campuses they become a shadow of themselves you know why because respectfully speaking in campus there are fellowships there is always something to do and there is someone to watch around your life but now you are an administrator now you are doing some other things everybody says systems you must create a system for bible study this night whether it's a topical study whether it's study book by book whether it's through the use of devotional make up your mind don't wait and say apostle why don't you do it and be giving us every day go on, i'm teaching you here so that you will go and find it and study don't stay on to be over pampered like that you have to take responsibility spiritually number two what is the system you have put in place for your mental development what is mental development correcting and building superior beliefs what is the system you have put in place to give you a superior philosophy about life i've told you every day without fail and i stand before god and before his people there are teachings i listen to there are people whose thoughts shape my understanding and it is a non-negotiable sacrifice i must listen every day How are you going to rise and become a marvelous tool that God will use when you are not agreeing with him mentally? There is Bible on tape. There is Bible on MP3. Is that true? There are many ways you can manage. I have, I have this, this, the words of Jesus only. I have it on MP3. On almost all my flash drives my phone laptop everything I have it there so sometimes I can just be playing it the words of Jesus only because these are the words that shape my mind and my understanding the destiny of millions depend on my efficiency I cannot afford to be careless those days we used to sleep with worship songs to confess to you now we don't do so much of that but those days it used to be worship songs from night till morning worship songs playing so it was a system to maintain your spiritual life you wake up in the middle of the night with such intense presence this is how god built us oh please return to it please return to it in the name of jesus christ submit to mental development get up and look for people whose philosophies are word compliant there are people even in the personal development industry whose, whose thoughts are word compliant. Listen to it to adjust your philosophy about life. Don't depend on the low level thinking. You can't be global that way. 
Number three, you must build a system to manage your health and your wellness. This is a very powerful one. There are homes today, respectfully speaking, who, who do not have any kind of first aid structure. God forbid, should anything happen to someone in that house, even if it is Panadol that is needed, someone will have to book an Uber. It is carelessness. I am sorry, but just, just receive it from me this night. It's carelessness. There must be a provision in place. Do you know, you are given only one body per lifetime. I have taught you. Maintaining it is your responsibility. And you must create a system around it. You must create a system on how to access rich food, vitamins and supplements if you want to, and then scriptures for your health. I have scriptures. You know, several men of God across the body have done several beautiful scriptures that speak about your health and your wellness. I listen to it every time because I intend to live long. And Jesus said we live by bread and by words. Hallelujah. I made up my mind one time that I was going to, you know, I was going to build a, a gym just for fitness. And um, <laughs> don't laugh. You've not even heard the story. It will make me always look like a, I'm a comedian. Listen, do you know that I now said they should look for a gym instructor, a coach for me? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they went and brought one fine young man who really respects and honors me. I was inside when they said he had arrived. I said, okay, let him just go to the gym and wait for me there. When he went there and I saw the guy, I said, did I tell you people I want to box and learn? This guy was built and looking like he could pick me. I said, what is he here for? To build me? No. It is such as you have that you give. I'm not interested. No, no way. That's not my assignment. It's not in the blueprint of my destiny. My assignment is just to be healthy. Any other thing greater than my strength, I depend on the Holy Spirit and military people. Thank God he has surrounded me with so many generals, they can help me. Ah, that gentleman was built. He now showed me videos of him doing exercises. He was using chains. Chains. Hallelujah. But the point is this. Look at me. If you don't take care of your health, you will die. I'm not confessing negatively. Believe me when I tell you, if you don't take care of your health, is there a system in place? Apostle, I collect 200,000 naira per month. You can discuss and allocate something for healthy living. It is true. It's a discipline we must learn in the body of Christ. Don't allow taking care of your health be an emotional thing. The day the pain becomes overbearing. Some of you, you live in pain every day. You are used to it. And these are signs that continue in your body for 10 years. Medical science will tell us that most conditions that destroy people can be managed if you were dealt with in its infancy. Do you agree with me on that? Hallelujah. I'm a man of faith or I'm a man of the spirit. But the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. I need to live long for the sake of the assignment. We are not afraid of death, but we know that we need to live long to finish that which God has given to us. Are we together? I'm saying this thing so that you will go back home. Don't just say, I attended Koinonia and I laughed. No, go back and sit down. For some of you, you may start this. You need to start putting a good system to have clean drinking water in your house. You are too blessed to be taking the kind of water you are taking. It's pure carelessness. It's just that you've not paid attention to it. What system have you put in place to excel in your work? Your work here means your career, your business, and your ministry. Man of God, what system have you put in place to meet with your leaders and train your leaders 
and train your workers and help them love God. Do you know it is dangerous? And there are several people here who are preachers. It is dangerous to be a man of God on fire and then not know what is happening to your leaders. You don't even know what is happening to your leaders. They are just there. You don't know whether they pray. You don't know whether they fast. You don't know whether they love God. You just know that anytime you give them an assignment, they do it. It's a risk. It's a risk to you and to that vision. Continuous development. Do you have a system for buying good clothes? Do you have a system for your presentation? I'm being very simple with you, but it is true. Be very systemic around your life. There are some of you, by reason of what you do, you can't be dressing in certain ways and say it does not matter. Those who bless you know how much they are giving you. And the way you are dressing does not justify their sacrifice on your life. There are some of you right now, if God leads me to bless you, and I say, who is your tailor? You say, well, it depends. Last week, it was one, I just found somebody new. You don't have anything like that. It's terrible. How then can favor become consistent in your life? System. Who cleans your house? I just call people, are you free? Or yeah, come and clean my parlor today. What is there with getting someone with as little as 30, 50,000 naira for most of you, especially because God has helped you? Why allow your house to be so dirty and unkept? You drive prospective friends and business people in your house and you have the money to keep that house clean. You can't be sweeping it every day by reason of what you do. Why don't you create a system? Your house is not too small to have a staff structure of two, three people. Give them an orientation. You are welcome to this house. This is how things happen here. Run this house as family. This is your job description. Do this very well. When visitors come, this is how to greet them. This is what you serve them. If they ask any question beyond you, this is what to do. Systems. You save yourself embarrassment just by having systems. For many of us, it's not lack of money. It's that our life is not systemic enough to attract our next level to us. There is too much freelancing of things. Are we together? A visitor comes to your house and he needs a bottle of water and there is nobody in the house who can go and bring the bottle of water. It shouldn't be. What are the systems that you have put in place? Now, this is a very serious thing. What are the systems in place you have, you have put for family life? Training your children, spending time with your spouse, bills, welfare that have to do with the home. These are very serious things. For many of us, respectfully speaking, there is no system to raise the children God has given you. They just keep growing in your house. If they are fortunate to find good friends or a good school to raise them, save Johnny. If it's unfortunate for them and they find bad friends, save Johnny. For some of us, respectfully speaking, our children can be becoming, you know, all kinds of bad, bad, you know, decadence in the house. And yet we don't know. We are busy making money. We are busy doing several things and there is no system. That was the mistake of Eli. Go and read your Bible, you see the story of Eli. He was a great man. Eli was sincere, but he was careless over Hophni and Phinehas, his sons. And as a result, it led to his own death. Your children will not kill you. In the name of Jesus. Family life. It's very important. What about your finances? What is the system you have in place for budgeting? There are some of us today, respectfully speaking, with what you are earning per month, in all fairness and in all sincerity, you may not be earning the whole world, but there are certain needs you should not have if there were a system in your life. That some of you still go to borrow money and beg from certain people who are by far less earners than you simply because their life is more systematized. There are certain kinds of birthdays you should not be doing, not with the kind of money you are earning. No, you are not yet there. There are certain kinds of, respectfully speaking, society living that should not be, not with the kind of money you are earning. 
as God lifts you, you can adjust your lifestyle to suit the growth. But the pressure of society, there are people who can go to a restaurant and millionaires are spending 100, 200,000 because their businesses will return back that money that night. But you who, even if it's favor that came to you, favor is maintained by wisdom. You also join and, and spend 200,000 naira that night and you go back, they are sleeping and you cannot sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look up. How about ministries? There are ministries that may not have the budget to be doing certain things they are doing. Respectfully speaking, this is with love to the body of Christ. For many years in this ministry, we limited the things that we did because of the future. And we knew that there will be times for capital projects and serious finances will be needed. But there will be need for management to cut away excesses. And thank God for that wisdom. Today at the level he has brought, there is nothing we want to do that we cannot do. It didn't just happen by favor alone. Through wisdom, a house is built. Is someone learning now? There are people today when you see them, you will think they have estates, but in truth, they do not have a single house of their own. Why? They have been earning a lot of money. I'm a giver, but let me teach you the truth. Even giving must be guarded with discretion and wisdom. Just because God mandates that we give does not mean we should be careless. Some of you are emotional givers. It's not just revelation. Somebody, God can provide you one million naira and maybe in your state or your area it can buy even if it's a plot of land and you can just sit in church hearing me preach now and say this man kai and you carry the one million now if god led you no problem but that you just stand up emotionally do you know there are people who have given to this ministry and called the finance department sincerely i'm not mocking them later on that they made mistakes and please is there a way i, I mean it i'm not joking For some of you, when, when they call, maybe in your various assemblies or in any meeting, they call for a vow or they call for giving, you see your colleagues and your contemporaries come out and out of sheer carnality and pressure, not the leadership of the Spirit. How many of you can give 10, 10 million here and what, the Holy Ghost is restraining us? Mm -mm. You are owing, you are still paying, you have not paid your children's school fees. Now, I'm a giver, I've taught you giving. There are many people today who even run away from churches because they vowed vows that they cannot pay. You went to three churches and pledged 10, 10 million and all the men of God know you. You are running away, your children are running away. It was needless. Systems. Most people don't prepare their offering before they come to church. It is when they see the person who is who is say oh, package your tithes and offerings they just check and look at everything that's why you are not growing financially this is the balance you can't give god peanuts and check what is here one thousand you return it back 500 you return it back 100 naira you return it back 50 naira you return it back then you carry the bad one and just squeeze it and drop and then you are laughing and god is saying i'm seeing your heart you ate in a restaurant before coming to church, you spent 10,000 and you came and dropped 50 naira. I don't mean to be a bearer of bad news, but you will not grow that way. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be. How about a system for savings? Do you know why pension scheme works? Aside from corruption and other things, do you know why it works? I will tell you because there is an automatic system to, de to deduct from your salary. Is that true? All through your lifetime. If they gave you all the money and say be depositing it yourself, only 1% of the people who receive pension today will have it. They know that there is a limitation in all men. So they created a system out of it. So that after 35 years of service, out of that, maybe added to it, maybe I haven't put it in some investment account with the little gain there, they can now be blessing you with it for the rest of your life. There must be a system to save. Some of you, if you calculate all that God has brought to your life today, 
January, somebody gave you one million for Happy New Year. Somebody gave you five million. Someone gave you 200,000. Someone gave you 300,000. During your birthday, you got 10 million. You have carried like 30 million. How much do you have now? 15,000. It's carelessness. Do you have a system in your life for replenishing? Listen to my financial series. Do you have a system in your life? Do you know there are many people who enjoy birthday parties? There are many people who enjoy anniversaries and when it's time for their children's school fees, they literally stand stranded. And do you know why nobody helps them? Because the impression they have given is that I am comfortable. You can't call us for a meeting and spend 30 million and be asking for 500,000 for your child. It does not add up. When people know you are genuinely in need and you demonstrate it by diligence to what God has already given you, people will be very quick to support you. I tell you this. There are times people come to me, respectfully speaking, to ask for help. And I look at them. I look at what they are wearing. I calculate at least with my mind. Look at what this guy is wearing. Look at the kind of car he came out from. And then he stands arrogantly and he says, I don't know, somebody said I should come and meet you. I don't know. And I said, no, this, this man is not worthy of help. If you help them, maybe just pay to the school and help the children, but not because of the person. Wastage. There are people driving cars today that are by far bigger than their levels. You have a car, respectfully speaking, of 50 million, 40 million, and you don't have a house. It's, it's, not, it's not a wise calculation. Everybody says systems. You may not like me this night, but I love you. We will soon pray. Hmm. You came to church. You should live wiser. Some of you, there are some money that should have come to you. God delayed it until you hear this message. Because if that money had arrived last week, with all the prophecies I've been giving you, God, God has allowed you now because he wants you to now that it comes with this wisdom. Those friends that used to call you, has it come? You tell them, listen, listen to Koinonia message. Part three, striving for mastery. Manage your passion for celebration and some of these excessive things. Let God build you and you can have to do anything and even give. Are we together? How about relationships? What system have you put in place for having and maintaining the various relationships needed in your life? Most of us don't have a system. What is the standard in your life for having friends? Anybody who just smiles at you and says, I like your shoe, or you just meet in a program, suddenly becomes your friend. You call them your covenant friend, bosom friend, until they tear you into pieces after two weeks. You leave them and look for another one. No, there has to be a standard. What is your standard for having friends? I've taught you this about relationships. There are general relationships. There are seasonal relationships. But there are covenant or destiny relationships. There are many of us, you can meet someone for the first time. And in two hours, you've told the person everything about your life. Plus the problem you have with your spouse, the problem that you have with your man of God, the problem you have with your children. And at the end of it, the man laughs. The day you have a problem with that man, he has everything in the palm of his hands. Be wise as serpents, Jesus said, and to be gentle as doves. Is someone getting wiser? Please look at me. There must be a system to manage your relationships. I told you my story. My dear mom, I'm sure she's following, watching now. Years ago, I didn't used to have that time, not intentionally. That time, you know, for my family and all of that, I was busy ministry, justifiably busy. And then we used to gather together 1st of January to pray. And after we finished, you know, AOB and my mother made a statement. I cried that night. My mother said, well, her statement is directed to me. She said, please, sometimes my family members also have issues. They want to see me. They want me to pray for them. And she would not mind that even if it is to tell them what time to be calling me. I said, my mother, this is the person that everybody who says, um, Hail king of kings. They are the same people who say crucify you. 
These are some of the people who will stay with you when everybody runs away. And I went back and I said, God, and I made up my mind that I was going to come up with an, a system of reaching out and at least doing my best to maintain my relationship with my family member. Some of you, you need to do this. Don't generalize your relationships. Who are the five most important people in your life today? By reason of number one, the spiritual contribution they bring to your life. By reason of number two, their, their dependability as friends in your life. By reason of number three, the level and magnitude of their financial commitment to your life. Don't generalize everybody. No, it's a mistake. That's why I took out time to celebrate my precious workers. And I did that sincerely. I have taught you this year. Not everybody thinks you are a big deal. Beloved people of God, when you find people who love you sincerely and believe you are a big deal, don't ignore them. Some of you, by reason of this teaching, you need to come up with a system. Maybe once every week, every two weeks, every month. If I cannot see my loved ones, at least I will send them a text. I will call them. Can I tell you, especially for your parents, whether you like it or not, someday they will not be here again. Don't waste the opportunity being a celebrity around the world to people who only love your gift and not you and forget the people that really matter in your life. It's time to reorder your life and create systems. Let me tell you this sincerely. No matter where I travel to, in a year, no matter what it is, if I have to for any reason, I will not miss koinonia. Maybe more than two, three times, and it has to be a justifiable reason. Maybe if I travel out and I'm not able to come, or maybe I'm doing a conference somewhere, that may be the only reason. But if it is Sunday, you will find me here. As much as possible. The school of ministry, I make sure that I am there to teach them by myself. Is it not me God called? Why did I say yes? If I say yes, I must obtain the grace and stay and be serious. There are some of you here who are men of God. You are losing your core membership in the name of the world celebrating you. They will leave you in a heartbeat the day they find an alternative. The ones who love you enough to come and sit and be part of the vision are deserving of your best. This is true. I learned this from God, Salman, Bishop Oedeko, and, so, and many of our fathers of faith in this nation. A few of them have had the privilege of talking with them. Except it is necessary, they will be home. Not out of insecurity. It is their primary assignment. Can I tell you, as much as you see me all around this nation and around the world, believe me, my dear people, you are my primary assignment. And as far as God grants grace, I will not fail in that. I will make sure that week after week, to honor your sacrifice of taking the risk to be part of this vision. Systems. When people know you are that serious about them, they will be serious about you too. They can now invite people to come knowing that you will not waste their time. I have said this, human beings are not stupid. If they find out that you are not contributing constructive value to their life, they may not run away from you, but they will look for an alternative that serves them well. Please go back and rewrite your relationships again. Who are the people who have shown you the greatest honor in your life? Write it down. The first five. Invest in that relationship. Who are the first five people who you know are shoulders you can lean on? No matter what happens in your tears and in your smiling, they will be there. They are not there for when you are happy. If you tell them today they diagnose me of something, they will say, thank God I'm here. We will die here. We will trust God and release our faith. Don't have those kind of people in your life and push them away in the name of I don't trust anybody. No. I love everybody, but everybody does not occupy the same place in my life as far as relationships is concerned. There are people who have gone out of their way to show me love, honor, kindness, to invest in my life, not just in monetary times, but these are people that if they see me crying today, they will not ask, why are you crying? They will look for a handkerchief first and make sure the crying stops before they say, why are you crying? How could I throw such people out of my life? If you want to strive for mastery, this is what you must understand. 
that's why you can see a few people they are never lonely they are never left alone because they've created systems are we together have you created a system on giving there are people who once blessed you who once helped you some of them are aged today some of them don't have the privilege to be as strong as they were when the government have you created a system around your finances to make sure that at least you are reaching out to them you see politicians here have a lesson that they teach us most of them this is what they do they remember people who have been there for them and respectfully speaking even if they are pretending it they do it there so that the rainy days they can the person can remember them you must edge your impact in the minds of people so that when the, the rainy days come they will remember you if you ever see any man excelling in life in ministry in business they systematize their success by helping them to reign helping them to understand what they need to do to reign I have put a system in my life to make sure my prayer life never goes down a system of refueling a system of maintenance a system of retreat if I go on a retreat today, Koinonia should not suffer because I'm going on a retreat. A system has been put in place. Father, have you put a system in your house that if you are caught up in traffic or you are not able to come back home, the school fees of your children will still be paid. Your wife will still be taken care of. Man of God, have you put a system in your church that even when you are not around, the fire on the altar never goes down, that your values become uncompromising? Have you put a system in place? Striving for mastery, part one, the foundation. Part two, the laws of dominion. Part three, the power of systems and structures I have been holding this mic for at least one or two hours now and yet it has failed to stop because there is a system that powers it and for as long as the conditions for that system is in place I can hold this from morning even up till night my goal is for you to become like Jesus in every way first in your character and your stature and then through knowledge and high-level illumination that you truly become people of influence and power that God can do much with you witnesses indeed according to John chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7 it says there was a man sent from God his name was John and he says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe every teaching you receive here series after series and there are so many of them lined up every miracle service here every time of counseling every time of prayer every activity in this ministry was designed by the spirit of god and through wisdom to work in synergy to build you to become a certain kind of people my challenge for you tonight is that god desires that you leave the realm of trial and error man of god enough of coming on stage without what to preach and giving flimsy explanations and say you know my schedule is busy enough of amateurism in display or communicating the word it's time to strive towards perfection hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 as we prepare to pray hebrews 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ it says let us go on to perfection unto perfection unto perfection a higher level of maturity it's time for people to be able to say i know that if we meet this preacher my life will change why because they know that there is a system around your life yes it is true we are humans but within the boundary of god's grace and principle you can become so exceptional that your life becomes an inspiration even to nations is someone ready to pray more love more power 
more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love more love more Hallelujah. In one minute as you're standing looking at me, many of you following from across the globe, the Spirit of God is asking you right now, identify the areas of inefficiency in your life. Identify the areas of consistent compromises in your life. Identify the areas of inefficiency swings, highs and lows. For some of you, it's your spiritual growth. You have never maintained an ever-increasing, consistent spiritual life for one full year. You must backslide somewhere and someone prays for you and you get back. It's time to strive for mastery. There are some of you, your finances, you have never had one year debt-free, one year trouble-free, one full year that you didn't have to borrow money. You can strive for mastery. For some of you, it's your family life. For some of you, it's the area of your mind. I have discussed a number of areas. For some of you, it's your organization. You have a great organization, but there is no leadership and no management. Everything is haphazard, no predictability. You do not have the structure that can hold the growth you are looking for. It's time to reinvent yourself through wisdom. Some of you, by Monday, tomorrow, you need to go to your place of work gather your staff together no matter how large and how small that store is you are not producing anything tomorrow it's a leadership training ladies and gentlemen i have learned something we have found the key to our inefficiency there are no standards in this place of work you come to work when you want to you don't come when you want to you wear anything you say anything there is no code that governs how we speak we don't have ethics there is no code of conduct there is no code of operation no modus operandi we look like different people even though we are selling the same product it has to change you have leaders and pastors under you everybody comes to preach what he wants to say that is wrong within the context of that spiritual organization you don't come and carry a mic and say well I'm a pastor in a ministry but I will preach what I like no no you have to be able to walk in keeping with the mandate given to the man of God at least within the time of your service there faithfulness is demanded are you getting what i'm saying now very important have you seen certain corporations that when you meet three different staff they sound like three different people this one says welcome god bless you how are you how can we help you the other one says, hey, how are you and and he's talking and you're saying you were trained by the same person say yes it's time to go back and standardize your results the nations are waiting for you you are a businessman, standardize your results. You are a man of God, standardize your results. If they invite you for a healing meeting, let it be that healing happens. If they invite you for a breakthrough meeting, let it be that lives change. I vowed a vow to God and I've told you that nobody on earth will ever meet me twice before they are changed. But it's not just an empty statement. You must defend it by the fire and the consistency of fanning your spiritual life. You didn't waste your time tonight, I assure you. You came to church to learn something. For some of you, this is the reason why increase has not come. No matter the prophecy, increase will be a waste. There is no structure. I prophesied as I was commanded life came to the bones and the Bible says when life came to the bones flesh came upon the bones bone to his bone there are family members that need to go back and sit down right now and say listen we need to put a system and a structure in this house are we together we can't have five children one is saying good morning one is saying how far one is saying what is your business there has to be a structure The mother cannot be responsible and the father is irresponsible, does not care. No, there has to be a structure and a system. Are we together? 
who pays the school fees of the children who is the one paying and who is helping let it be defined let your wife not be paying the school fees and then you say hey, after all you are doing it the most important thing is that we are one what is the job description in this house if she's paying the school fees effortlessly you must be ready to cook sometimes too effortlessly Sorry. structure I challenge the men in this ministry you know what your mandate is don't be irresponsible this is not an irresponsible ministry stand to your mandate take care of your families don't sit down and cross your leg and follow these things unbelievers do and punish the woman just because she said yes to you no let there be discipline every man here should get up is your responsibility by god as far as the context of family is concerned to make sure that your children eat i know that things may not be i don't have money have relationships then i've taught you that relationships are currencies too if you don't have money respect those who have it and honor and serve your way to their life so that you can enjoy the leverage but where you don't have resources and you are arrogant again you are designing failure how about spirituality please let me challenge you take this issue of your spiritual life seriously when you get up pray okay in this family some of you may need to go online download bible study plan or scripture reading plan or a devotional that is, that suits you that is comprehensive what is the system in place for your prayer as a man of God, is there a system for the prayer of your ministry? Is there a system for the people to learn God's word? Is there a principle, a, a, a system for them to be trained to know? Don't assume that just because you are sincere, the system will work. You have to bring people together and teach them. Nobody within your care should outgrow the need to be mentored and helped. Anybody who outgrows your mentorship has outgrown being around your space too. Are you ready to pray in one minute please no movement around you are going to cry to God from the depth of your heart Lord I'm ready to step up to a life and a Christian experience that produces results indeed I am tired of shadow boxing my life up today down today tomorrow spiritually financially and otherwise you have taught me tonight the power of systems and structures no wonder the bones in my destiny have not come back to become a great army because the bone has refused to come to its bone i take responsibility for my state right now and i obtain grace someone open your mouth and begin to pray please pray from the depth of your heart outside pray all the overflows pray following by way of television praying or online pray make sure you are praying we're wrapping up talk to jesus my life needs to shine forth this is the season of strange results it's my season of marvelous light lord you have brought me light i need to systematize my results systematize my spiritual growth systematize my mental development systematize my approach to life approach to learning my business my organization the ministry you've committed to my hands you are there to help me but i obtain grace to put systems and structures leadership structures a modus operandi that is derived from scripture that will produce consistency of results a code of conduct and a code of operation pray a code of conduct and a code of operation a system that is derived from scripture that governs how i behave and respond to life a system derived from scripture that governs how I do the things I do that my actions become predictable now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise a sound 
we raise a sound for he is God and God alone hallelujah one more time now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise a sound we raise to speak over your life now and I want you to receive it with your heart not just by the lifting of hands but from the depth of your spirit listen this organization is related to lack there were 5,000 people randomly arranged in that crusade ground but when it was time for feeding Jesus says before bread comes let them sit down Arrange everybody. Let there be order. Structure it so that the distribution will be well. Can you imagine that even with that order, there were still 12 baskets. Imagine what would have been wasted in the disorder. I've been to Redemption Camp. I've been to MFM Camp. I've been to almost, if not all, the major campgrounds by the grace of God. Sometimes I look at these magnificent ministries and these campgrounds. And I wonder, what system did they create to manage people like this? Do you know what it takes to manage people like that? How do you sit down and know that over 30,000 branches, 20,000 branches, 10,000 branches are healthy and you are in one place? And the Holy Spirit told me, God is still seated on the throne. And yet every Christian, he has not had to come to the earth to follow compliance even in heaven when lucifer rebelled it was the system that fought him god already put a system god never had to stand up from the throne and say ah who is threatening my stay there was already an allocation of responsibilities the bible never said god fought he said michael it didn't say any angel there was an angel allocated to make sure justice God is the one who sits upon a throne made up of righteousness and justice but because of system even in heaven today you don't find people run into the throne room just to bow there is order and there is system there is what must be said before they say what is the lamb heaven without evil still has doors and gates say systems when Jesus walked upon the earth he told the people let them sit down and when they sat down he carried five loaves two fish he blessed it he said now go to the system that is already organized and begin to prosper them listen the testimonies that will come out from this because many of you you see this is what the devil has been fighting this is why your Christian experience does not look exciting because you are up today with zeal and passion and then you go down sometimes painfully then you start again but my Bible says the path of the just should be as a shining light that shines ever brighter go and write out every area that is not working in your life or the area that is epileptic in its result you will check there and find out that a system and a structure is what is missing maybe not lack of character maybe not sincerity of heart some of you there are friends that are long overdue to get out of your life wrong associations most of them are unbelievers but because you have not created a system in your life there is no legitimacy to say no they are your classmates they are your friends they are your tribes people when you create a system let the system do the fighting Are we together? 
you're going to pray one last prayer you're going to ask the Lord to visit that area in your life where your results need to be predictable in your Christian experience that one area go ahead and pray you're about to receive something to cap up this series you have learned about the spirituality of life you have learned about the fact that the realm of the spirit controls this realm you have learned the various laws that make for dominion now the Lord has brought us into this understanding of systems and structures bone to his bone hallelujah hallelujah when Joseph was living a prophecy as prime minister he gave them a word he said someday the Lord is going to bring you an exodus out of this land and he says make sure as you are going carry my bones with you do you know what he was saying do not forget the structure do not forget the formula that made you to excel even in a strange land as you leave this land carry that understanding with you not just a physical skeleton alone carry that understanding if it worked for you in in uh, Egypt it will work for you any other place every organization runs by systems and structures there is no luck when the results become sustainable you can have short-term results that is purely by luck man of God it's time for the ministry to rise I don't doubt your call you are anointed you are a prophet you are an apostle you're a pastor you're an evangelist but the problem is the system businessman with what you carry you should be relating with the kings in that industry but lack of system has brought you down it's time to go back and reorder your life let me be able to know that every day you pray every day you study scripture let me be able to know that you have predefined times when you fast you don't have to announce it and tell everybody there are times that there can be corporate fast but when is your own personal one let me be able to know the times that you can go for a retreat alone what is the system in your life when there is an attack what is the system in your life when something good happens to celebrate you must go back and give your life that level of meticulous definition and I pray for you in the name of Jesus that whilst you are focused doing that may the grace of God work for you may the mercy of God speak on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ anywhere you have not gotten sustainable results by reason of this series in the name of Jesus the power to begin to command results receive it in the name of Jesus Christ and hear me anything that should have been released in your life but was withheld whether by demonic forces or it was a deliberate act of God to help you so you do not lose it when it comes I declare that now that you know these things may the mercy of God release it to you now there will be no wastage in your life from today no spiritual wastage no financial wastage no relational wastage no mental wastage no depleting of your health in the name of jesus christ and hear me for those of you who have who are now experiencing any kind of depletion or any kind of trouble that came directly because you did not understand systems and structures whether you are owing financially or maybe your health has deteriorated as a result of this or your relationships have plunged into misery or something is wrong with your spiritual life the same way the hair of Samson grew back by the mercy of God I decree and declare that his mercy speaks to that issue now everything dead or dying in your life by this proclamation it jacks back to life now but like I always say there are two areas that are my main focus number one is your spiritual life number two is your finances let me speak over both in the name of Jesus that the least among us here may you be as great as David that the least among us globally the global koinonia family 
may the least among us by grace be as great as David and even for the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ may God begin to mature the saints across denominations across regions across nations in the name of Jesus Christ then I pray for your finances that when men say there is a casting down for you I decree and declare by the power of prophecy may you say there is a lifting up I want you to believe there is a grace for what I'm telling you I'm saying it again in the name of Jesus anyone here who is in need of financial breakthroughs because of seasons in your life that you're in I stand by the God who has shown mercy that in the name of Jesus may those doors be open speedily open speedily open speedily may my God touch the heart of men to bring treasures and blessings to you and let me pray over you whatever it is that you do the work that you do whether ministry your career business whatever it is in the name of Jesus I empower it to begin to produce results in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Heavenly Father in Jesus name I pray just a minute or two you can go ahead and celebrate Jesus I want to make the altar call right now hallelujah everything happens in this kingdom because God designed a system seed time and harvest impartation spiritual growth and now salvation let's minimize movement as I make this altar call it is always my joy and delight to give people an opportunity who need Jesus sincerely and desperately in their life the Bible says the Lord added daily to them as many as should be saved every time God's people come there are always those who are to be saved there are people here in this auditorium and all the overflows following by way of television and the internet you are saying apostle thank you so much I desire to begin this experience with God but I need the salvation of my soul or you are here you are saying apostle I love Jesus but my life has gone haywire and I need restoration please make sure that you are not ashamed to say anyone is looking at me this is between you and the God of heaven wherever you are we have just one minute for you I want you to leave your seat right now and come and stand here everyone God bless you people are coming take that bold step and come to Jesus God bless you as you come make sure you win that war you are rededicating your life to Jesus you are making that decision God bless you they are coming are you celebrating them all the other the overflows you follow suit come to Jesus he's able to give you a new beginning you can start afresh again apostle I want to come but I'm not sure I remember giving my heart to Jesus but things have gone haywire can I join them you are most welcome very quickly join them he's able to save even to the uttermost he will give you a new beginning hallelujah young and old keep coming hallelujah if you're joining them please hurry up I want to pray now thank you so much for all of you who have come to make this decision the Bible says as many as would come to him he will in no wise despise thank you for the courage to make this glorious decision Jesus said if you reject me before men or deny me before men that I would deny you before my father here's a chance for you to start afresh with Jesus even if not anew he gives you room to start afresh thank you so much for coming I want you to lift your right hand if you will all of you who are here and those who are connecting by way of television and internet you can pray the same prayer the power of God is there to ensure that you become recipients of this glorious life say Lord Jesus say it again convincingly say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now 
I make Jesus Savior of my soul Lord of my life and my King I declare that the power of sin of Satan of hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen and amen keep your hands lifted father thank you so much for these ones you have brought them to Jesus and I pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven I also declare upon you that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I declare that by the authority of scripture you are recipients of the life of God and from today and forever you go forward ever and backward never I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit may you be established and grounded in righteousness for in Jesus name I pray amen and amen God bless you thank you so very much may I request that you move to my right which is your left you have the counselors waving their hands to you they'll have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them koinonia thank you so very much hallelujah hallelujah thank you so very much please may I request that after the grace uh, because of the rain as much as God grants you the grace if you can give someone a lift that you find even though I know that because of the times that we live in you know people are trying to be careful but at least if and when you can please do well to help someone so that um, it can complement uh, with in addition to some of the arrangements that have been made the bus arrangements and so on and so forth may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus and again do remember that every time you come please do not come alone do not come alone there are many people who need to be saved there are many people who need to be mentored they need to access light based on scripture let your life be the link and the platform for them to receive this rise up on your feet as we close for tonight thank you so much for your patience and your love the Lord bless you and may your week beginning be an excellent one you will see the hand of God in your life all through this week go and excel go and reign in Jesus name your fire and your hunger for God will remain afloat in the name of Jesus you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus name God bless you let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen God bless you and see you on Sunday hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.